Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville as I call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, we have no regrets this evening. Council, do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I don't see any. Um, Council, I, um, I believe that I don't need that. So uh, we need a, a mover and a seconder to go into Committee of the Whole. Councillor Lafworth and Councillor Hutchins, all in favor, and that carries. So now, Council, considering the item four that has attracted so much public interest here, uh, if you're here for item four, which is the, uh, the matter at 2266 uh, Lakeshore, would you just put your hand up for us? You see that? <laughs> just a couple. So I want to thank you for your interest in our agenda this evening. And um, we have a number of items which I'm going to propose to Council we uh, clear the agenda so that we can spend the rest of the meeting with you this evening. And, uh, and so we're going to attempt to be very efficient with the rest of the uh, agenda this evening. Uh, so first I would call for a, a mover for the consent items. These are the items, Councillor Duddick, for the public's benefit, these are items that are uh, not controversial in any way and there's not a lot of argument that, that anybody could think of and that's why they're called a consent item. All those in favor? Opposed to Finney, and Councillor Duddock's motion for the consent items has uh, carried. Thank now, you. that includes the, <laughs> thank you, Councillor. That, that includes the confidential consent item, and, uh, the, uh, and for which you have a, 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 a memo here, which I hope you all took notice of. It's revised. Pardon? The CT recommendation is revised. What? The confidential C2 has been revised by the memo, just so they know. Right. So I'm advised by the clerk to remind you that confidential item C2 has been revised by the blue memo that you got when you came tonight. So I'm going to check before I put an item before you as I try to clear the agenda for the public. Is there any need to uh, ask questions or go into the growth monitoring report, item number five? If, uh, Councillor Adams? Oops. I'm satisfied to move it to the end of the agenda, if that helps. Uh, it is after this item already. So, so you don't want to pass it without... Uh, well, I have a question of our or staff. Or receive it, rather. I have some questions of staff, so I'd rather wait. All right, so it's a, it's a receipt of a report do your questions have to be asked at the meeting, or can they be asked any other way? All right. How about I make it fast? Could we get figure five reissued? Because it looks like it's half a, half a graph, and then I'll move receipt. The answer is yes. You can get it reissued. <laughs> Councillor Elgar. Your Worship, uh, I, I have a few questions, but what I would really like is the numbers to, uh, from uh, for 2031 and 2041 and where we are right now and how we've moved over the last 10 years. Okay. I, I don't need it now, but I do need it. I've, right. I've got lots of numbers here, so I'm trying to figure out which ones were wa where Waldo's going here. Excellent. Any others? Moved by Councillor Adams. All in favor? Opposed? The motion, uh, the, the, the report is received. The notice of intention to demolish at Maple Avenue. Any need to discuss? Councillor Duddock moves it. Any discussion? All in favor? That is approved. Uh, the tourism function report, Councillor Adams. I'd like to move an uh, alternative uh, motion to the staff recommendation. I'd like to move that the uh, report be received and that the funding uh, question be moved to the 2017 budget process for consideration. Any problem with that? All those in? Pardon? As I understand it, the councillor's motion, councillor, is your motion that the services agreement model for the tourism function as outlined in option three be approved in principle and that 25,000 for the remainder of 16 be confirmed in the first quarterly report and that a services agreement between the town and Visit Oakville 
be drafted and additional funding of 50 for a three-year period be considered through the 2017 budget process? My intention was that the funding be maintained as it was in the budget for this year and that the consideration be moved to the 2017 budget process. Okay. I do think that we should move to a service agreement model, but. So, Councillor Elgar? We need the 25,000. All right. Um, the motion is before us. Uh, defeat it and change it. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? New motion. The motion I read, Your, Your Worship, I would move the motion just read that we and that the twenty-five thousand is included for sure. All those in favor? Opposed? All right, carried. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, the economic development twenty fifteen annual report can be had again when we consider the measures that are called for later this year. Move Moved by Councillor Elgar. Any discussion? All in favor? And that is approved. Your advisory committee minutes. Moved by Councillor Duddick. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. The Livable Oakville Official Plan Review Council Subcommittee Report to be received. Moved by Councillor Hutchins. All in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. Uh, have I skipped anything? All right. Public hearing item number four. Councillor Duddick? Sorry, Your Worship. Just to clarify, so. so we have moved the confidential one and C2 in the process, or is that being referred to? Yes, it's listed here as a consent item. Uh, unfortunately, the, men, the agenda was a little unclear, but um, uh, sorry. That's the one that's amended by the memo. Yeah, so it's done. We have it from the clerk. What could you ask? What more could we ask for? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, we now have come, we're going to pay all our attention to you. And um, I hope it's been made clear that a number of years ago we changed our procedure so that we don't make yes or no decisions on planning applications at this stage. What we do instead is we provide a way for you to register your opinion about an application in front of us so that we hear it and so that the staff hear it. And then later, probably months from now, staff will produce what they call a recommendation report. That too will be circulated in public and that too you will be able to comment on. So um, the pressure's not on you tonight uh, in that nobody's gonna score in anybody's net tonight. All we're gonna do is make sure that every issue of concern to the public is raised and put on the table. And, um, and in other words, this is a friendly process. So, uh, uh, and we have, we have uh, almost three hours for this. And you can, if you want to, repeat what someone else has said. But if you would like to, you also could say what he said. You don't, you don't have to repeat people word for word in order to be able to emphasize it. We're all fairly uh, above average, and we can understand that Me Too is just as strong as saying it word for word. So, uh, but in no way am I limiting you from repeating uh, what other people say. I'm just telling you that uh, it's just as strong to say Me Too. Um, now, the way we're going to proceed is we will have, there are other people in town interested in this, they don't have the benefit of being in the hall or sitting and looking at the papers. So we're going to have a brief summary of the item for, uh, because this is broadcast. And others who are watching on town TV or YouTube, uh, yay YouTube, since today, um, uh, they'll have the ability to know what you're talking about. And then council will ask questions. And, uh, and many of us who will ask questions will be asking questions of staff, not you. Um, uh, partly to prove to you that we've read the file and that we understand the issues. And then it's your chance to, uh, to tell us uh, what you think about uh, the proposal. Council, because it sits as a judge on an application, isn't um, advised. It, it's, um, our legal advice on hearing applications is to wait till we've heard everything including the staff recommendation before we take a side. And so you're not going to hear council say things like, 
yes, you're right, I hate it. Council uh, is going to do a really good job of being neutral and objective and waiting to hear everything before they take a position. And you'll, you will want them to be that way if you ever have an application in front of them. You, don't, you won't want council making up their mind before they hear everything. And, and so you can understand that it's, it's only fair for council to uh, avoid making its mind up before, uh, before it's time. But council is, um, council's job is to make decisions and when the recommendation report comes, council will make a decision. So with that, we're going to turn the, uh, everybody's attention over to our planning staff and get walked through this very interesting proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council. This is a statutory public meeting on an official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment submitted by Simjin Lake East for lands located at 2266 Lakeshore Road West and 83 East Street. The staff report can be found on page 67 of tonight's agenda. The subject lands consist of two properties located at the southeast corner of Lakeshore Road West and East Street. This air photo identifies the application area and its context with the surrounding area. Adjacent land uses include a 17-story condominium apartment building to the south, a single-story commercial plaza west of East Street, a single-story commercial use, which includes a gas station, a convenience store, and a bank north of Lakeshore Road West, and a two-story residential use to the east. Schedule P of the Livable Oakville Plan includes the property within the boundaries of the Bronte Village growth area and designates the property as Main Street 1 and as lands eligible for bonusing. This designation permits buildings up to four stories in height and in certain locations, including the subject property, an additional two stories of height is available as a result of bonusing for a maximum building height of six stories. As part of the ongoing official plan review, the policies for the Bronte Village growth area are also under review. A draft direction prepared by staff for public consultation proposes to redesignate the subject property to Main Street 2 which would allow a building height of six stories with an additional four stories available as a result of bonusing for a total building height of 10 stories. The applicant has applied for an official plan amendment to change the existing land use designation from Main Street 1 with bonusing policies to Urban Core with bonusing policies, which would have the effect of securing permissions for a 12-story building with bonusing provisions allowing for an additional eight stories in exchange for the provision of community benefits. Further to the requested redesignation of the subject property, the applicant requests that an alternative parkland dedication arrangement is applied to the subject lands. The purpose of the request is to cap the value of cash in lieu of parkland dedication to a percentage of the site area, which would be determined having regard to best practices and other comparable development sites. Bonusing allows municipalities to secure benefits in exchange for permitting additional height or density in a development application. Requests for bonusing are reviewed in context with bonusing policies contained within, livable, contained within the Livable Oakville Plan, as well as the town's corporate bonusing procedure. The Livable Oakville Plan outlines a defined set of benefits that may be considered through bonusing. Within Bronte Village, benefits may include such matters as improved transit and transit amenities, affordable housing, public parking facilities, streetscape enhancements, heritage conservation and enhancement, parkland and public art. The applicant has asked the town to consider the publicly accessible urban square and the architecture of the building as potential public benefits. Before additional height would be considered, the development must be found to represent good planning principles and conform to all other policies and criteria of the official plan. Given that increased building height is requested through the proposed development, the potential impacts from the proposed bonus development are being evaluated through the technical review. Any bonusing allowances are at the sole discretion of Council. The proposal requires a zoning bylaw amendment to rezone the lands from Main Street 1 to Urban Core with regulations 
specific to the subject property related to building height, building setback, and reduced visitor and commercial parking. The zoning bylaw amendment would require a section 37 agreement as a means of implementing the bonusing provisions being sought under the official plan amendment. This slide shows a proposed conceptual rendering of the proposed development as well as a conceptual site plan. The applicant seeks approval to permit the lands to be developed for a mixed use building up to 20 stories in height containing 144 residential units and 770, 767 square meters of retail and service commercial uses located at grade and second floor levels. The tower is proposed to be located diagonally across the site and mounted on a two-story podium. Four and a half levels of underground parking are proposed to be accessed from a driveway off of East Street. A public information meeting was held on January 27th and was attended by 92 residents. A number of written comments were submitted prior to, during, and after the public information meeting and are attached as Appendix C of the staff report. As a result of the notice that was sent for tonight's meeting, a number of additional letters were received as well as a petition which have been distributed to Council for review. Generally, the comments received from residents raise concerns related to building design, building height, increased traffic, pedestrian safety, parking, infrastructure capacity, viability of proposed commercial space, as well as construction management. Staff will continue to review and analyze the proposed applications and address all technical matters along with the submitted public comments and report to Council at a future meeting. The recommendation report will include a review of the following matters which have been identified to date. The building height and design, traffic and parking, impacts to adjacent lands and the surrounding neighborhood, impacts of the proposed bonus development, consistency with the objectives and principles of the livable Oakville plan, as well as emerging directions being raised through the Bronte Village Growth Area Review. To conclude, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce the application and to obtain any further public comment, and staff put forth the following recommendation for Council's consideration. Thank you for your time, and we are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, Council, are there questions for uh, Councillor Amira? Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, I have a number of qu uh, questions here, but I'll just maybe, um, uh, I think one of the most important ones that I'd like to ask is there was a lot of confusion with regards to um, the Brawny Village uh, growth uh, review and in terms of this specific site. And, and I was wondering if you might be able to, or, or either our director, just explain how this site application will be judged and what the role of the growth review uh, it would have on this or not have on this application. Thank you, uh, through you, uh, your worship, to the councillor. The application will be uh, considered under the policies that were in effect at the time of the application. Uh, having said that, uh, there is uh, something referred to as the clergy principle, which says if there are significant changes in um, policies or situations around any specific land use application that may be uh, so important that they should be brought to the forefront, we will do so. Uh, the one issue we see is a possibility of that is the current Bronte Growth Area Review in the context of the livable Oakville Review. So we've held the door open so that we can look at the existing policies and should something of significant and, and importance come forward, we would have the opportunity to review that as well and advise Council accordingly. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question, if that's you okay. You have the floor. Keep <laughs> asking. Um, this is a, a question that um, many of the residents have raised in terms of construction uh, and um, what would happen to the sidewalk. As you know, we have a senior's residence down the road from there, and getting back and forth to, to the Brawny Village, that's, that's a vital corridor. So I'm wondering what the impacts of construction on that would be, um, whether the sidewalks would be protected, and, and what that would look like uh, during construction, which could take years. Uh, through your worship to the councillor, uh, well, it's hard to speculate on something that hasn't been built yet. There's many details that remain undefined, servicing locations and so on. However, having said that, 
uh, the municipality, the town of Oakville will ensure that there's proper pedestrian access throughout the construction phase. There may in fact be temporary closures, but there will be a, a, a pedestrian plan in effect for those times. Of course, the uh, pedestrians will be separated from the construction site by a hoarding and overhead protection uh, as they, they traveled uh, on the sidewalk beside the site. So there would be no safety related issues then, the access would be clear and free at all times and, and we would ensure that uh, the developer would, would um, understand that this is a little bit of a different uh, um, age-based demographic that would need access to that sidewalk. So, I, you know, wider hoarding, um, you know, um, a mobility assisted devices would need to go through there, there's such things, those would all be taken care of. Through your worship to the councillor, the sidewalks would be looked at to be maintained to provide access for all citizens okay. of Oakville. Spe and of course, those issues would be brought into, into bear when we look at the actual uh, timing of the construction and the issues around how long they would need and what we can do to respond to the issues you've raised, Council. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, just to build off that a little further um, in terms of what the plan is calling for, um, how, uh, when the, the, the finished product that is, as it's presented to us, what would be the setbacks um, from an actual building to the road edge? Um, and, and what would that walkway look like that fronts on Lakeshore uh, under the proposed uh, drawings? If I may, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, in response to the, the setbacks, those are the details of the zoning bylaw uh, that would be flushed out you know, through this whole process. Uh, given that it is within a growth area and we're encouraging a mixed-use building, uh, regardless of what the height might be, it would have to have an appropriate interface with the street. So it would be uh, at grade, so it would be accessible, um, but the building setback itself from the property line would be precisely determined through an ultimate implementing zoning bylaw. If I may, through you, your worship, that potentially the applicant may be able to provide some information with that later on. Thank you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cede the floor now, but I might have a follow-up question or two after. So is, just to assist, as I understand what just got exchanged, uh, the applicant can tell you what they would like it to be. Ultimately, staff will decide what to recommend to council, and finally, council will decide what it will be. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lischina. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, my uh, quick question is about the, um, on the slide it said, right now it's uh, designated as one, but potentially going to MS2. Uh, could you, the, the draft plan, could you make a comment on that, Main Street 2? Is that part of the review that that's, that's recommended? Through you, Mr. Mayor, a little confusion. Um, we have initiated the Bronte Village Growth Area Review, and a number of directions were brought um, forward. There's no decisions on them. It's this one of the directions was at that location. There may be some opportunity to um, permit uh, some additional growth, and we did receive. We are receiving some feedback on that, but no decisions have been made. It's just one of the many directions that we provided to get some input from the public on. Councillor Elgar. So along the lines of uh, Councillor Chenna, it's pretty interesting because I didn't hear that, that uh, answer about uh, Main Street 2. So Main Street 1, just so we're all clear, you're allowed four stories, maybe two with bonusing. Main Street 2, you're allowed six stories, maybe four with bonusing. The, the application, if I, if I understand right, he wants urban core 12 plus eight stories. Is that right? Through your worship, that's my understanding of the application. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Any other questions from Council? I have a couple, if uh, you'll permit me. Um, can we add, are you, on your list of issues to be considered, I didn't see words that I would take comfort from that you're going to consider the what I would call the validity of the bonusing uh, benefits that they're offering. Uh, I was, um, uh, I know that we went to a lot of trouble on council to set up a definition of what bonusing could be and you know, uh, and we were told it's a best practice to lay it out so that anybody can understand it. And the, uh, 
the proposals that were described to me are not consistent with what I, I thought we had adopted as our policy around bonusing. So could we be sure that we're also evaluating whether these are what I would call bona fide uh, bonusing offers by these people? And secondly, could someone explain in math what the alternate parkland dedication quote unquote means in numbers? Like, um, what they must have asked for something that can be turned into something that can be understood by an average person like myself. And as I understand it, under the Planning Act, 144 units would require them to give us uh, 48 hundredths of a hectare, almost a half a hectare. And as I understand it, there's something in the vicinity of a quarter or a fifth of a hectare there on that site. So um, alternate parkland dedication, what does that mean in terms of uh, uh, the calculation that, that uh, a person reading the act would make? How does that change from one to 300 and so on? What, what's that mean? I think the applicant may be able to provide more details of what they have in mind. If the details that you're requesting weren't available in the planning justification report. So on our issues list is also to consider the adequacy of the parkland dedication proposal? Yes, I'll add that to the issues list. All right, with that, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Clerk uh, we, and, and members of the public, we now come to your turn. And, um, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, we have a, 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 an aid on the wall. It's a countdown timer. It tells you uh, when you've used up 10 minutes. And uh, uh, I hope that it will be of assistance to you. And uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the first registered delegation? We're going to poll the audience uh, after we've heard the, mem the people of the members of the public who signed up to speak. Uh, we're going to then poll the audience in case anybody has thought of something to say at the end of the people who've already signed up. So if during the, the 10 or so that have signed up, you become anxious about wanting to get on the list, don't fret. You'll get your chance. All right, Madam Clerk. The first delegations are, are Jane and Ken Briggs. Yes, Mr. Briggs, if you'd come on up and share your information with us. Um, if you can talk toward the microphone, it'll help people at home to hear and understand you. Uh, do, does the light need to be on, or can everybody hear me? No. Mayor Burton, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and my grandson, Bryson. <laughs> Good evening. It's just a short little letter that um, my wife and I put together uh, over the last few days. My wife and I moved to Oakville um, just last year, and we searched for quite some time looking for the right place, all the way from East Oakville, all the way through to Burlington, uh, Brand Street area. And we settled on the Bronte Village area because of the spectacular building we live in and the character and charm of the Bronte Village itself. And we do agree that the area could do with a facelift, as a, as a side note, I'm, I'm from North Yorkshire, and I'm a stone's throw from um, Bronte country, real Bronte country, uh, in, 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 the, in the Lake District. And believe me, the villages there are beautiful. This, this village needs a little bit of work. That was just a side note. I, I, got, I digress. I apologize. You, you, you mean no offense, I'm sure. Yeah, no offense, no. And we're not adverse to smart development, growth, and intensification, which seems to be the new buzzword around uh, the city these days. We would like to strongly convey our adversity to the proposed project of a 20-story building on the corner of Eastern Lakeshore, and we would like to ensure that the growth and development of this historical area is done in a fashion that preserves and enhances the qualities and character of the village and does not turn it into a concrete jungle. Um, we do recognize that the area has a res residence quarter to fill, which has been decreed by the province, but let's get this right. Let's not try to fulfill these quotas by building Trump Towers on postage stamp size lots. I have to give my wife the credit for that one. 
Well, thank goodness for that. Now, we have a rule against applauding or, or unapplauding. Oh. And, and I'm letting that go because, A, a Trump joke is so timely right now. Yeah. And, B, uh, Jane, it was very clever. If I may, Mr. Murray, you, you folks can applaud me any time, so I'm overruling the mayor. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, the application put forth for a 20-story commercial and condominium building is, of our opinion, absurd. It would seriously negatively affect traffic and safety of its residents in the immediate area, and in addition to absolutely ruining and violating the sight line of many residents, including my wife and I. Obviously, if this application such as this one is approved, there will be more such developments to follow, which would not be a good thing for the Bronte village and its residents. With great respect, we thank you for your time and appreciate you taking the weight of our concerns, opinions, and views into consideration when making the final decision on this application. Thank you very much. Thank you for your information. Before you go, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I I took your points that you raised, and thank you for those, but I wonder, given what you said attracted you to the village, and given in the official plan that the vision of Brawny, which was created by Brawny residents uh, about five years ago when we built our brand new from the ground up official plan, um, do you also have a concern that this proposal might not fit with the vision as reflect of the village as reflected in our official plan? Well, yeah, of course. The, the, the livable um, plan that, that was put forth, as you say, five years ago, probably, probably didn't include a 20-story building. No, uh, not at all. In fact, that Main Street 1 that you heard mm -hmm. described earlier is the vision for the area from the, from the plan. So thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Elgar? I just uh, like to ask an individual to get some feedback as to what height would you consider reasonable? Like Main Street 1 is four stories, and maybe with bonusing two more, so you'd be a six. Main Street 2 is six stories, but could be bonusing of up to another four. What number works for you? Me personally? Yes. I would like to cap it off at 10. I think the shores, if I recall, down by the lake shore, uh, went through similar the gyrations of what we're all going through, and they, and they capped it off at 10. Now, this particular corner, I believe, is four and, four and two. Is it six stories? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm piecing, speaking for myself now. I, I think 10 is, 10 is sufficient. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Appreciate your time and Thank your you. information. Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? Next delegation is Brian Hassett. Mr. Hassett, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thanks. Uh, I reckon I might be in a minority here, but I'm here to in praise of this project. I think it's great. Um, I've been here, homeowner in Oakville, since um, the lake used to lap up on Ontario Street, and I sat and listened to Bill Hill's stories for hours on end, and uh, I think we should make him the eternal honorary mayor of Bronte Village, but that might be another town council meeting. Um, the, uh, the a couple of the issues that I was at the last meeting and people have been raising about traffic. I, I, I've lived in a bunch of places and we do not have a traffic problem in Bronte. I mean, I maybe can count in 20 years when number of times I've had to wait for the light to change twice to get through some intersection. So you could, I don't know if it's illegal, but you could play ball hockey on the side streets in Bronte by the hour and never have to move your net. So I can't see that this 144 unit building is going to fundamentally change the traffic in our neighborhood. Um, and it's not that many people, 144 units. Let's say two people live in them each. That's 300 people. We need people in Bronte. I've been living here years and seeing stores open and close within a year. Restaurants, retail places, uh, corner bars. There's places that are sitting empty today. Um, and the ones that are still holding on, you look in the windows and there's two or four people, if that, in any of these places. We need people to make Bronte Village better. 
Um, I'd like to see a library here. I'd like to see a Starbucks here. I'd like to see some more restaurants, maybe a place that has music survive. This can be a cooler neighborhood than a McDonald's and a Tim Hortons. I think we're better than that. And, and this design of this building is going to attract young-ish people, people with an artistic aesthetic, uh, architecture fans, hip young people. Uh, which is an advantage. We've already, you know, the latest thing that was put in was that seniors thing on Bronte Road, you know? Let's put in the opposite of a seniors thing. Let's put in something for the other end of the age spectrum. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm, so, uh, and this, the architecture of this building is fantastic. I invite any, I, I hope all of you do your due diligence and look into the other buildings these guys have developed and the architects have designed across Canada. This is as cutting edge as architecture gets. And when I first opened the website and saw the design of the building, I thought, oh, like that's, that's just like an ad for the kinds of things they do. But then when you flip through the, we're gonna put this little crappy regular thing in your neighborhood. But no, that's the thing that's coming in my neighborhood. It's gonna be right on my corner. It's gonna be out my back window. This is going to bring architecture tours to Bronte. And then they can scooch down and check out the shores while they're there. But that's how good this is. This is gonna be the nicest modern building in Canada in between the Humber River and the Museum of Human Rights in Winnipeg. That's a heck of a stretch. And it's going to be in our little town. And I think we would be crazy to turn this down. But such an interesting place that's so forward thinking in so many ways is going to be in our town. It's going to make things better, not worse. So that's what I'm hoping that we uh, make Oakville better. And this looks like a, an amazing gift that's coming to our town. And I don't think we should look this horse in the mouth. Thank you very much for bringing your information. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, having regard to the way the vision for Brownie Village was set out in the official plan five years ago to have, um, if you will, a corridor of this, the, this Main Street One, which was described earlier, and the idea of, of uh, turning it to Main Street Two that's being studied right now, um, are you sure that uh, you want 20 stories, Main Street 4, in this one particular spot? Well, you, I think you're talking, it goes, it, you, they want to go all the way to urban core designation. Yeah. Right. That's and you, you, rather than have that spread through the Main Street, you'd like to have it all concentrated on the end? I don't think it has to just all be concentrated on the end, but it's become sort of a landmark building. Like, you're going to be able to see this from the QEW, and it's like, that's Bronte. And like, that's the place to go. That's where it's cool. That's where there's some good places. OK. So uh, I, I, um, I guess I'll ask the follow-up question, which is, um, would you like it to be Main Street 4 on the entire Main Street there? What I'm concerned about is we don't have any people to go to the shops that are already there. So we need some residential. And the way you get residential rather than urban sprawl is you go up. And so if, we, if you guys develop all these nice two, four, six-story buildings along the thing, who's going to shop in any of them? We need residents here. And so on one little tiny corner that had a deli, they're, ba they're able to put in 20 stories. I think it's amazing. What a gift. Instead of that, you know, effectively useless land of one you know, little thing there, or two little things, um, and 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 then we'll have the people. So whether we go four or six or whatever you want to do down the strip, there will be an anchor building at one end, just as there's already the shores, the new old folks place there on Bronte, or you know. So there are there's already one on the other end. So let's have something cool and distinctive to go, ah, as you're coming along regular old Lakeshore Road, and then it's like, boom, you hit this thing, and now you're in a new space. I mean, that's like a great, it's like, a, they call it the, uh, the Pillars of uh, Hercules, at like Gibraltar at, at, and Spain, you know, like these, you know, and this will be designating this in this direction is cool. All right, clearly you're very well traveled. Thank you very much for your information. Okay, you're welcome, cheers.
Uh, the next delegation is Shelley Thornborough, who is Vice President of the Bronte Village Resident Association. Welcome, Ms. Thornborough. We look, we look forward to uh, your information. It's a tough act to follow, eh? Good evening, Mayor Burton, regional and town councils, uh, members of council, town staff, and members of the audience. The Bronte Village Residents Association advocates for smart, responsible, community-centric, and sustainable development in Bronte. We believe an engaged approach that am among all stakeholders brings transformative change in the jewel of our area rich in historic value, culture, charm, and home to Bronte Harbor, a natural landmark. We do not support this current proposal of a 20-story futuristic condominium. We've received the site application and reviewed it in great length, met with members of our association and, communi and community on several occasions, the planning department, our Ward 1 counselors, and attended all the public hearings. And we do not support this proposal on four main fronts, namely the level of intensification proposed, the impact to safety, impact to quality of life, and the architectural design that is not reflective of the charm, culture, and historic value of the village and of the harbor. So I'm going to go into the four main um, areas that we look to talk to as far as the site proposal goes. The level of intensification. The current proposal of 20 stories represents over-intensification for the property footprint. This was evidenced by reviewing the site application that proposes to extend development of the first two levels of the building right up to the property line adjacent to the sidewalk. This is on both East Street and Lakeshore Road West, the base of which is occupying the majority of the property in comparison to numerous high rises in the area where the base of the buildings occupy only one third to one half of the property footprint. The proposal is in non-conformance to the livable Oakville plan zoning, which allows for only two to four stories up to a maximum of eight with bonusing. These standards are in place to allow for balanced and sustainable development. Urban core zoning is primarily designated in areas within close proximity to mass public access, such as GO train um, and highways. And to site it in, at the eastern gateway of our Bronte village seems completely out of place. Bronte is already home to 10 high-rise buildings, eight of which are clustered in the east end. Do we have the capacity to absorb the level of density in this proposal without negative impact to this community? The second point we're talking to tonight is about safety. The lack of, safe, of setback of the building represents three main areas of safety um, for the community who negotiate in the area. Reducing visibility within and approaching the traffic intersection of Lakeshore Road West and East Street. This puts residents, seniors, and youth at risk, especially with only one entrance and exit, positioned adjacent to the sidewalk and in close proximity to the intersection itself. The next area is elevated risk of exposure to extreme weather events such as storms and floods and other negative impacts by excavating five levels of underground parking. In comparison to the development that went on at Ennis Clare on the lake, they encountered many issues during construction, one of which was requiring heavy machinery to excavate only two levels of underground parking. The next point on safety is the increase in vehicular traffic in the area by the proposed addition of 144 condo units. Bronte is already experiencing traffic congestion and speeding, and we have had a public meeting to that effect. In 2014, the town of Oakville issued a road system report that identified six intersections that were rated at a level of service D. For those of the members of audience, a level of service A to C are deemed as acceptable with minimal delays to motorists, while level of service E and F represent unacceptable delays. We are on the cusp of going to an E, and of those six intersections, four of them were in Ward 1, 
An additional three have been identified last year for additional study. A review of the traffic report associated with this site application reveals that the base data is outdated. The base data backdates to 2013, and the accuracy of the data modeling is questionable as it suggests minimal impact to projected traffic volumes up until 2021, when we are already having documented issues of congestion and have as many as seven intersections of a level of service D. Impaired safety impedes physical activity for many demographics of our community. We're especially concerned for the seniors and for the youth. The Halton Region released a report encouraging active transportation as a means to increase physical activity and prevent health-related issues. Seniors are prone to fractures through falling as a result of low bone density and osteoporosis. Active transportation is endorsed by our Halton Medical Officer of Health, promoting and implementing what is called the Active and Safe to School Routes Program. This encourages children to walk or bike to school so they can participate in physical activity, an important component for battling childhood obesity. The next component is impairment to quality of life, health and wellness. Increased traffic volumes result, as a result of this proposed intensification leads to traffic congestion and speeding and the byproducts of which are noise and air pollution. Air pollution contributes to environmental issues such as climate change, acid rain and smog and these in turn lead to health issues Im impairing the quality of life for people prone to asthma and heart attack. The impediment to the surrounding buildings by an imposing obstruction 63 meters high an angle to reduce natural sunlight and scenic views is of particular concern to our seniors, especially those with mobility issues in long-term care. Health and wellness are vital components of aging in place and longevity. Bronte is home to many seniors and retirees who are attracted to a relaxing, charming, beautiful area with distinctive character. Our fourth um, point that we're talking to tonight is the design that needs to be reflective of the charm, culture, historic value of Bronte Village and Bronte Harbor, our landmark. The architectural design of the condominium doesn't reflect this charm, culture, and historic value. It displays a lack of understanding of the community and the surrounding environment. And there was no input sought from the community regarding the design concept. And whilst we do, as why some people have stated here tonight that it is iconic design, it is probably more suitable to a metropolitan city such as Toronto. Bronte Harbor, built in 1856, is richly linked to its surroundings with Bronte Village, known for fishing and stone hooking. Today, the landmark provides a backdrop to a unique and distinctive character of the village, offering a destination and a focus for community pride. This is an important feature among many of the facets of our modern life today, which make Bronte livable, a jewel in the livable Oakville. As a result, we would like to see the benefits of any proposed bonusing reserved for community benefits through the enhancement of the Eastern Gateway, reflecting the heritage of Bronte, expansion of green space, and increased accessibility for a more walkable and bike-friendly area. We have three requests tonight that are vital in assessing the proposed site application in its entirety. An independent engineering study to examine the possible impact of excavating five levels of underground parking to the surrounding area. An independent traffic study with 2015 base data to project the levels of traffic volume associated with the proposal of the site of the condominium and the effects to the community. And we would also re request schedule, rescheduling of the council meeting to receive planning's recommendations of April 18, 2016 in order to receive and thoroughly review the data from these independent studies and make the recommendations accordingly. Saying no to the proposal is not saying no to development. It is saying no to development at all costs and saying no to development which includes a proposed cap on bonusing benefits which limits social responsibility aligned to the level of intensification on the table. Saying yes 
but we in turn ask you to say yes to smart, responsible, community-centric, and sustainable development. This type of development not only allows balanced infill, but it also is um, physically efficient in the long term. Let us partner together with the developer and other stakeholders to build consensus and a community in reflection of what makes Bronte great. Livability promoted through the livable official plan is what makes Oakville attractive to many demographics of society. It's time to walk the talk and to make it the cornerstone of our decisions as it is the way of our life. A livable Oakville is a livable Bronte. Thank you. Thank you for your information. I wonder if you would please clarify for me the third ask. I understood the engineering study and the new traffic study. What were you asking for on the, uh, the third one? We were asking for a rescheduling of the council meeting to receive planning recommendations noted for April 18th in order to receive and thoroughly review the data collected from these independent studies. Oh, I, uh, so if I understand correctly, the, the new studies should be ready by April 18th? No, we're not saying that they will be ready by April 18th. We are asking for the meeting to be rescheduled to allow for adequate time for the independent studies and for planning staff to review and vet them accordingly. Oh, I see. All right, thank you very much. Councillor Elgar has a question for you. Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor Burton. The question is, what, in your opinion, is reasonable from a height point of view? Four, six, ten, twenty? Like, can you give me an idea of where you're, where you're thinking? For? We do not believe that twenty is reasonable, but we do believe, having worked in great length with the planning department, um, that the recommendation for a Main Street 2 designation for the site may be fairly reasonable. So a six plus per... per Perhaps a, a bonus thing of four. Correct. So ten at max. Got it. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Thank you very much. I just wanted to clarify your, your point about wanting additional time for the next meeting. Is that, I presume what you really want is additional time between when the report is released and when the meeting is? Is that what you're seeking? And, and if so, how much additional time? How much time do you think you need as a residence group to um, review the document and consider it and be able to come back with an appropriate comment. Councillor Adam, our, our um, request here is not uh, additional time for that of our residence association. Given that today is March 21st, we believe that less than 30 days f for the planning staff to, f to fully vet the application as it stands today is a short period of time, especially when there seems to be a growing list of issues to be addressed. Um, given that we have two requests for independent studies and engineering and a traffic study, we, would, we do not know the timing in which to put this, these independent studies together, but it would appear rational that additional time is needed beyond April 18th in order to vet the site application and receive the independent studies. Okay, so your concern is not one of wanting time for uh, public review time. Your concern is adequate time to do the work. Correct. Thank you very much. I appreciate that clarification. So um, before we go too far down that road, um, Diane Childs, uh, are you going to telepathically anticipate the question and tell me when uh, the clock uh, ticks on the board here? I am, Your Worship. Thank you. I knew I could count I on think you. there may be a little bit of confusion. Uh, what is proposed on April 18th is um, to the subcommittee of council is an update on our three main street reviews of Brawny Village, Kerr Village, and downtown Oakville. And it's where we are at in the process and what we've heard. There are no recommendations going forward. It's just an update on our three growth area reviews. So I'm pretty sure that's the date you're talking about. Um, but it has no association with the application. Thank and you for the clarification. So, uh, and our planning director, Mr. Simeone, uh, perhaps uh, you have the answer to my question? I'm not certain if I will, Your Worship. I'm just, 
wanted to make sure that the, you, you and the members of council are aware that the 180 day of time frame will be coming up on June 12th, I believe. And we're hopeful to have all the information we can underway so that uh, we are able to bring council an opportunity for their uh, you know, input into the final process so we would have that uh, taken care of in that time frame. Excellent news. I think I speak for all of council to say uh, we would like to, uh, for the public's benefit, we have until that date to make a decision after which the applicant is entitled to go to the board, uh, basically appealing our failure to make a decision by that time. And I believe I speak for all of council when I say council would like to make this decision. Mr. Simeone. Again, uh, through, your, through you to you, your worship. Um, the, the, the 180 days is a few days before that the scheduled meeting date is in June. So our preference would be to get it in on the May Council date so that we would have all of that time is tight on this one. That's what I would call a good answer. Thank you very much. Good to know. So that gives you a bit of a time frame that we're working in. Uh, if, do I need, uh, did you follow that? Would you clarify what the time frame is we're in in May? If Council wants to make the decision instead of the Board, Council must make the decision and will, I believe, on May 21st. And everything will flow uh, up to that date. Okay? Uh, May 16th, I'm told. Good by you, Mr. Simeone? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we will do our best to report in the May time frame. It is a tight time frame. But we do recognize the appeal date is early in June. So the May date of Planning and Development Council will be the date we're targeting, and we will send out notice to anyone who is here tonight so that they clearly know the dates. I'm able and willing to call a special meeting. Not to forget, we have one. That's one of the tools we have so that we don't get behind on uh, the clock with the board. Ms. Thornborough, um, I have questions for you from Councillor Robinson and Councillor Grant. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, thank you, Your Worship. Shelley, you and uh, your organization known as the BVRA has done a lot of diligent work on this project from the beginning. You've come forward with a lot of good ideas and you've made some good suggestions here this evening and you've asked us to help you carry on with your work by making some additional meeting times more prolific and easier to work with. In addition to that, has your organization taken a position of any sort as to what you think should end up being built on that particular piece of land? Councillor um, Councillor Elgar asked her that, and she indicated that Main Street Two was um, her organization's view of a reasonable approach to the area. Okay. Is that is that the answer? Yes, we are in we are in support of the uh, direction for a Main Street Two designation, and the reason we are in support of this, having done extensive work not only on reviewing the site application as it stands tonight, but also the Bronte Village Resident uh, Review Area uh, Area Growth Review, is that if we allowed for a Main Street Two designation it would um, effectively put a better planning tool in place and eliminate the need for urban core. Now, there, are, there is one other um, condominium, the Shores, that is designated urban core within the Bronte Village. Um, and this was, I think this came into effect at the time <coughs> when we didn't have planning directions and we didn't have a review under process. So this might be a very forward way of eliminating the possibility of additional urban core zoning within the Bronte Village um, that is probably not appropriate for the area. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Shelley, for your, all your work and your determination. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Councillor O'Meara, did you also have a go? 
coming Th over there. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, uh, thanks for coming out again and speaking on, on behalf of the, uh, the association. You guys do great work. Um, I, I'm just trying to get some clarification um, because one of the four objections you had, I believe it was the first one, was on intensification. Um, and intensification and height, I think we're starting to interchange them a bit. So I'm, I'm wondering um, if it's the height that, you, that the residents have an issue with or the amount of people that would be there because as you know they could shrink the height and go wider and bigger and actually add more people while building a smaller building so is it the intensification numbers for that site or is it the height um thank you councillor mayor for your question um i think when we look at intensification we look at it on a number of different fronts it's not just about the height because as far as zoning goes the uh, level of stories is also associated with a corresponding meter. So for instance, under the, um, the zoning designation of MU1, one story will, will, it has the equivalent of 3.75 meters in height. If we go to urban core, we get reduced down to three meters. So given the limited footprint um, base of this building and the footprint of the property, I don't think a reduction in the level of stories is going to add more units um, as proposed because I don't think fundamentally there's the space to do so and there and it would go against building ordinance. As far as the level of intensification goes, if you look at the site, if you look at the footprint of the site and um, the, the, the square footage of the base, you will note that the base actually occupies majority of the, of the property footprint. When we look at surrounding condominiums in the area, um, they have adequate setback and they only occupy one third to one half of the entire property as it stands. The other piece of, as far as intensification goes, is you know, the number of units. A lot of the, um, the growth targets have been imposed by the province and cascaded to the region and municipality and obviously down to the six identified growth areas. And we have to consider the level of growth in the eastern end of Bronte because we already have 10 high rise buildings in this area. We also look at what the driving purpose of having these high rise buildings here is, is to increase the level of intensification, increase that foot traffic to the businesses in the area. When we look at the fact that the shores have gone up and blue water has gone up and it hasn't really helped to drive the vibrancy as far as the businesses goes, we would argue that the solution has to be more multifaceted. This is not a solution that's hinged on intensification alone. And so when we look at this level of intensification, it's on a number of different um, avenues and it's not just based on height alone. So kind of both then is what I'm hearing. Intensification is too much and, and the height is too much. And I, I, if I, to, to simplify it. If you took it in a simplistic <laughs> view, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Grant. Thank you, Your Worship. Actually, I was gonna jump down the same rabbit hole you did regarding the uh, confusion on timing and dates, so I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much, Councillor Grant. And uh, Councillor Chenna. Thank you for your delegation. Um, my question is, I've, in the R agenda, uh, there's information about uh, population growth between 2012 and 15, and in the southwest, which would include the Bronte area, there's been an increase of 0.7%, so estimation of 300 people. Um, I was really quite surprised because everybody talks how they want to live near the lake and all of that. And so I'm wondering, as a residents association, do you get a lot of inquiries about people wanting to live right in the village area? We do, and um, in conjunction with the Bronte BIA, we are attending a number of um, events in the committee, particularly that of Canada Day, where we sit up a booth and we interact face-to-face um, -face with a lot of the community members. And this is a great opportunity to actually meet newcomers who have let us know they've moved recently to the area or are attracted to move to the area from other areas such as Glen Abbey or to the east. Um, the lake being a huge draw for them. And the walkability and small town friendly feel of the village itself. So we are encountering a lot of inquiries from both um, newcomers and families to the area. 
Um, we do know that there is a consensus review that's coming out in 2017 that will give more indication as to the level of growth in Bronte and Oakville as a whole, and we'll be able to analyze the demographic changes then. So in your opinion, is there a lack of um, housing in, in that area in order for the, the demand? It depends on, when we look at the, the lack of housing, it really depends on what, what that housing is. Um, fortunately in Oakville, there are a number of different mixed uses. You have your um, standalone homes, you have townhouses, and you have condominiums or high-rise apartments. As if we're talking tonight as far as condominiums go, there seems to be an oversupply. There's a lot of um, vacancy on the market for both the shores and the blue water. Um, of the 329 condominiums that sold um, in 2015, 60% of that was in Bronte, and we still have more that's listed on currently right now. So we have 15 at the shores, an equivalent amount at Blue Water. In terms of other types of residential um, occupations, such as stand home alone, uh, um, I think that's coming, gonna come from other levels of, of development. As far as the growth, um, the, bro the growth review goes, there is a designation in there that's actually looking to change some of the low density to medium density and increase the different levels of residences that are offered in the area that will actually be able to count, um, cater to the, to the demand. Thank you very much for your information, Ms. Thornborough. Thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council. We appreciate your time. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? Next delegation is Ann Fairfield, President of the Board of the Halton Condominium Corporation at 2263 Marine Drive. Ms. Fairfield, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. <coughs> Greetings, Mayor Burton, um, members of Council, planning staff, and the gallery. <coughs> Pardon me. I attended the January public information meeting and asked one question. What other property on Lakeshore Road in Oakville has MU4 zoning? It has taken until last week to get an answer to that question. The only site on all of Lakeshore Road in Oakville to have MU4 zoning is the Sobeys Plaza in Bratty, and that was given by the OMB several years ago. The Simjean proposal is asking for an OP amendment and an MU4 zoning. In the 10 minutes I allotted to me, I will explain why this proposal is too much for Bronte and the town in this location and a precedent for all of Lakeshore Road in Oakville. Uh, Melissa, I wonder if you could put up the um, design uh, diagram of the proposal <clears throat> and if council could bring up page 7 of the planning report 16498 table 1. First of all you should know that I am speaking on behalf of HCC 72 which abuts this proposal on Lakeshore Road and has residential zoning. If you look at the distance diagram, you will, this is the concept plan that's there, and, but that'll work. Um, if you look at the uh, concept plan for, the for this proposal, you will see that there is a parking lot on the right-hand side, and there is an outline of another building. That other building is HCC 72. But there's one key feature missing from this and from the, de the design diagram, and that is the balconies. There are common elements for exclusive use of the residents facing north, and they are exterior to the north wall. I suggest that that is the point from which the measurements should have been made to see if this project will fit with the, what is in table one. If you look at table one now, you'll see that the minimum year, uh, rear yard MU4 special provision proposed requires 4.5 meters and the minimum average rear yard 
of 30 meters. This application falls short. It's approximately 20 meters. This is one factor, and HCC 72 will not capitulate on this shortfall. If you go straight ahead on the parking lot for visitors parking, you come to the exit for our outside carport. This is underneath a former tennis court, which is now an 8,000 square foot sun deck, and that leads to our outside pool. You can also see this on page three of the planning report, which shows you the uh, air photo of the area. Could we have that up for council, please? Page three. There it is. In the air photo, you have the application squared off, and you see the white blob at the rear of the Simjean property. The shadow studies done by the applicant show that this whole area of the proposed building's shadow will shadow most of that area the whole time our pool is open from the 24th of May till late September. This is the only outside amenity HCC 72 has now. It is very detrimental to deprive people of sunlight, both physically, psychologically, and socially. It is also going to affect our owners financially because it is going to cost more to heat that pool to 82 degrees. Besides casting long shadows, a 20-story building is also going to block the viewscape of everyone on the north side of HC72 and the group home and Oakville Senior Citizens residents to the east and Anisclare North to the southeast. One of our biggest worries is the potential for damage to our building, particularly the underground parking where there is no setback from property lines. From the air photo that we are discussing, you can see that if you drew a line from the north wall, again, that's along that uh, parking lot, straight over to the property line, there's an overlap between the Simjean property and ours right at the carport, which is <coughs> also known as the sun deck. And um, our two-story level underground parking building starts there. Over the 40 years that our building has existed, hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent restoring our parking garage. Twice in the past 15 years, major work has been done, and the town has had to permit our residents to park on the local streets for long periods of time. We are very concerned that the applicant is proposing five levels of underground parking, which is literally going to undermine our property because it goes right to the property lines. If this application is approved, we ask that the town make a, it a condition on title that Simjean Lake East Incorporated or any other future or owner of this property provide to HCC 72 as beneficiary an insurance policy in perpetuity in the amount of $2 million as protection against any future damage to the north wall of the HCC parking garage and any damages to the carport underpinnings at the property line. Proof of such a policy should be provided to HCC 72 annually. If this application is approved, the town needs a construction period agreement with this applicant 
Remember that every inch of this property is to be excavated to a depth of at least 50 feet for five levels of parking. This small property will afford no room for the construction workers to park or work, no room to store material. Brody Village people remember the thousands of truckloads and the time it took to reconstruct 8th East Street to Ontario Street for the construction of the marina. In this agreement, the daylight hours of work need to be specified, with none on Sundays, and other concerns that the town has. We heard some of them tonight about sidewalks, etc. Along with contravention fines, need to be thrashed out ahead of time of the minimum a minimum of two years that such a project will require. We ask for your protection and ours, the residents who will have to bear the brunt of such a proposed development. As per Table 1, naturally we prefer that MU1 zoning remain on this property. In keeping with the status quo in Bronte and for all the reasons I have outlined here tonight, I trust that Council will give serious thought to this precedent. Please remember that maximum heights do not have to be granted, nor do eight stories in bonusing, nor does minimizing parkland dedication or accepting daylight triangles as community benefit have to be done. Any application should pay its way. In closing, may I say that I believe in social justice for everyone. Basically, this means one should not do anything on his property that is going to harm or impact me or my property. This application fails to meet this test. I thank you for the opportunity to share our concerns with you tonight. If you have any questions, I'll certainly try to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Fairfield. I don't know how you did that, but you did that to the second. You should be a television professional. Maybe you are. Anyway, very well done. Do you have questions, Council? Councillor Duddick has questions. Your time on Council has served you well, obviously. Um, I just wanted to clarify um, the points that you raised, especially as they pertain to the underground parking, which I share your concerns with. What is the level of underground parking that you have at this point? Two, Two. levels. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Elder. Yeah, thank you very much. A uh, couple of questions. So what height do you see that this building should be? Is question number one. And the second question is, what height is your building? Our building is 40 years old, and it is 17 stories high. Okay. And what height are you saying you would like to I see? I have said in uh, my address, I pref we prefer MU1 to stay as it is. Which is four stories with probably, or possibility Minim of two bonusing? Minimum two to four, with, and uh, it could go to bonusing of two. So you want really two to four story? That's right. Thank you. That's what Main Street looks like in Brody. Thank you. Councillor Liz Chenna. I, I think this might be a question for Mr. Simeone. Uh, Main Street 2, which would be up to 10 stories with the bonusing, what would be a shadow cast on that on the building that uh, is described here? Do we have any idea? Through your worship, I, I can't answer that question. You'd need a study. You'd have to look at summer, winter solstice, that type of thing. Uh, we could we undertake to look at that as part of uh, information coming back to you. It seems to be a major concern with the residents. Uh, uh, Very much not just our residents, but when you're going to block off even the penthouse unit on Ennis Clare North, which is on Marine Drive, that's a pretty long reach. Thank you, Ms. Fairfield, very much for your time tonight and your information. Councillor Chen, if you look at the aerial still up, uh, you'll notice the shadow from Ms. Fairfield's building, which is 17 stories. And so you could interpolate. We'll do the study and everything, but you can, you can make a good guess from that, I think. Madam Clerk, would you call the next uh, delegation? Next delegation is Morna Snare. 
Ms. Snare, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Burton and members of Council. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Here are some of the reasons that I hope the town will turn down the request for a change of zoning at the southeast corner of Lakeshore Road and East Street. A large development at this corner would be much too close to the lighthouse condominium next door and would block the view and the sun from the residents. In fact, many would be looking right into the windows of the new building, even at 10 stories. <laughs> um, the development within the current zoning would already be a great increase in the density compared to what is presently at that location. A request for a 20-story building is ridiculous. That's not infill, it's intense growth both intensification and in height. Already there are too many high rises in this area of south, or at the south of Lakeshore. And just because mistakes were made in the past doesn't mean we have to keep repeating them. At least the older buildings, as many people have said tonight, were built on much bigger properties, have parkland, large setbacks with landscaping, trees and flowers, and lots of space between the buildings. New developments seem to build their right up to their cement, right up to the sidewalks, and are much more intrusive. This corner is supposed to be the gateway to historic Bronte Village, and a huge tower would be the farthest thing from what we want our image to be. The shadows alone from a building this high would interfere with the seniors, local residents, visitors, and tourists that walk in the area, not to mention how such a huge tower so close to the sidewalk would block the sky. This type of building belongs in Toronto, not in Bronte Village. The shadow studies that show from June to September, all summer long, the lighthouse pool would be shadowed in the late afternoon, which is the very popular time for residents to use their pool. And as mentioned earlier, the traffic at this corner can already be very busy at certain times of the day. The lighthouse already uses the East Street exit, or East Street as an exit, and the new building would be entering and exiting in the same area, and it would be a traffic nightmare. Last week, I put a petition online that has already been signed by more than 300 people. We are asking that Oakville Town Council please turn down this request for a change in zoning. We ask that you insist that the developer build within the current zoning, which is the MU1 designation, and adhere to all the setbacks and the parkland that is required. After all, this is the zoning that you, the town, has decided is proper for this corner in the official plan, the plan for a livable Oakville. We are not asking for anything extraordinary, only that they stay within the limits that you have placed on this location. They knew what the zoning was when they purchased the property. Bronte doesn't need another mistake by the lake. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your information. Councillor Elgar. Just, I just want confirmation. So you do not support the Main Street 2 scenario no. at all? No, you know, it's, okay. it's the entrance way to Bronte. Got I think it. the MU1. Thank you. Councillor Elgar seems to be auctioning off height numbers here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> stick to your guns. You're, you're fine to stick to your guns. Uh, Madam Clerk, the next delegation, please. Next delegation is Anna Hurahane. Uh, representing the Bronte Village Residents Association, the president. Ms. Horhane, thank you for Good coming. Good evening, thank you. It's a double-barreled BBRA it, night. It's not. I'll clarify. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Councillors, and staff, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, as stated, my name is Anna Hauerhein, president of the Bronte Village Residents Association. Um, but to clarify, I'm not here to rehash everything that Shelley Thornborough so eloquently stated uh, for our association. Uh, I'm actually here because we've received an incredible amount of letters and feedback uh, from the community regarding this proposed development. And I'm here tonight to read one such letter on behalf of a resident who is also a member of the Brawny Village Residents Association, Philip Boyd. Uh, due to prior commitments, Mr. Boyd is unable to be here tonight, but he truly wanted his letter read and included as part of the public record. So thank you for allowing me to do that on his behalf. His letter reads, there are many reasons to reject the proposed development on the northeast corner of Lakeshore Road and East Street in Bronte, but we will focus on just one, public safety. The proposal calls for two levels of commercial slash retail space right up to the edge of the sidewalk on East Street. 
There are 10 high-rise apartment buildings and many single-family homes in the area, east of the development site, housing more than 2,000 people. When shopping, many in the area walk and take the shortest route. For these local residents, the shortest route to the retail stores located on Lakeshore Road is along E Street, passing the proposed development site. The developer's proposal calls for 144 condominium units and five levels of underground parking for 247 vehicles. These vehicles will be required to exit and enter the building on E Street. Number one. If the developer is allowed to build two levels of commercial slash retail space right up to the sidewalk, the exit from the garage will present a serious safety issue for pedestrians. When exiting the garage, a driver will not see pedestrians until his or her vehicle actually starts to cross the sidewalk. I have witnessed many close calls in downtown Toronto where there are several, several garage exits from buildings that front the sidewalk. Pedestrians in the area tend to be agile, young, and middle-aged people, but they are constantly put at risk when passing a garage exit. Number two, the pedestrians on East Street in Bronte tend to be retired and elderly people, many with mobility challenges and some using mobility scooters or powered wheelchairs. For them, the proposed garage exit on East Street presents a serious public safety issue. Number three, due to limited indoor parking, most of the building's commercial slash retail store customers will be forced to use the same sidewalk. If these businesses are successful, at times there will be pedestrian congestion and people may well be forced to step off of the sidewalk. This is unacceptable. Number four, Lakeshore Road in Bronte Village is regularly congested during rush hours and during the summer months. This encourages impatient commuter drivers to use Marine Drive between Third Line and Bronte Road as an alternative, often exceeding the speed limit and barely hesitating at stop signs. Again, a public safety issue. It would be unwise to ignore these issues and put the lives of local residents at risk. Let us learn from past miscalculations. Number five. Would planners have recommended commercial establishments to be built so close to the roadway through Bronte Village if they had anticipated the future rather than rely on then current traffic studies? The Bronte condo slash commercial slash retail building as proposed would be closer to the south side of Lakeshore Road and any other building between Third Line and East Street and would impede the possible widening of that section of Lakeshore Road in the future. Number six, most sidewalks in Bronte, including East Street, allow two people to walk side by side and residents continually have to walk single file to pass oncoming pedestrians. Just look at the example of the busy pedestrian traffic on the northeast side of Bronte Road between Lakeshore Road and Marine Drive. Would planners have recommended commercial slash retail establishments to be located so close to the roadway if they had anticipated the future volume of vehicular and pedestrian traffic in the area. Clearly they would not. Let's not make the same mistakes again. Today the footprint of the proposed building is far too large for the size of the property, let alone the impact it would have in the future. Let common sense prevail. A building of six stories, four and two bonus, would comply with the existing bylaws, help Oakville Council achieve the artificially imposed target of providing accommodations for 3,000 additional residents in Ward 1, and could be built to address the serious public safety concerns of local residents. For the reasons stated, I strongly oppose the proposal to construct the buildings to the edge of the sidewalk and further oppose the construction of any structure that requires an official plan livable Oakville plan or bylaw amendment. The proposed development represents significant intensification resulting in unacceptable overdevelopment at this location on Lakeshore Road in Bronte. Respectfully, Philip J. Boyd. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very good reading. I guess I heard him, I would summarize what I heard as, these guys got what they bought and why are they asking for more? Councillor Elgar, I see your Height survey is going up here. He answered you, I think, in his letter. I, I think he did. At the very beginning of the letter, 
you read Northeast Corner. Uh, what did yes. you say? Um, or what there, did he say? He, he says, there, and, and I should say that he stated that if there are any questions, his information is here. I have copies that you no, can no, ask him directly. No, no, I have not questions. I just want to know what but, okay. the wording was. So that says, there are many reasons to reject the proposed development on the northeast corner of Lakeshore Road and East Street. Do you that's mean that not, See, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, it's the southeast, southeast corner. So maybe if you could just correct that letter. Sure thing. I would appreciate it yep. because we want to make sure we're on the right property. Thank you. And I did get I could, the answer on the numbers. Councillor, I could hear, I could take his description as what you might say if you're standing south of there and looking up and calling it the northeast. I, I, I understand the confusion. I don't think we need to misplace his intent. It's clear. Okay. We're, we're, we're kind and gentle here. So uh, uh, I just want to ask one thing. You're, he's not here to, an to answer this question, but... <clears throat> Were you here as part of the creation of the Livable Oakville plan five and six years ago? And did you participate in the Brawny study that led to the 3,000 target in Brawny? I personally was not involved at that time. Okay, well, in our defense I've, and in defense of the province, that was not an artificially imposed target. That was a requested by Brawny target because Brawny wanted more customers for their village. And we haven't achieved the target, uh, of course, but uh, I just wanted to try to dispel the idea that council uh, was in some way forcing something on Brownie. Brownie begged for this, so uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ventilate that, and uh, we appreciate your time and your information. Councillor you. Hutchins, did you have a question as well? Thank you very much. My question actually is towards uh, Mr. Simeone there. Um, let, me, let me excuse uh, Ms. Horahany. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Boyd's letter number five, uh, he's saying the Bronte Condo commercial retail building as proposed would be closer to the south side of Lakeshore Road than any other building between Third Line and East Street. And then he says would impede the possible widening of that section of Lakeshore Road in the future. Uh, how would that impede it? I thought uh, Town of Oakville had a, a public right of way which wouldn't be encroached upon. I'll get this right. To you, Your Worship, to the Councillor, that would be my understanding as well. The uh, road right away, if it's not deemed sufficient, the town might in fact take additional widenings to accommodate that and all the things expected within that right of way, sidewalks being one of them, and then the building would be set back from the new lot line if that was the case. So that would be supported through traffic studies, etc. We wouldn't diminish the roadway to increase the building. I think it would be the other way around. Okay. I wanted to make that clear so that other people understood that too. Thank you. Alrighty then, um, Madam Clerk, could you call the next delegation? next delegation is Lindsay Thomas. Welcome, Ms. Thomas. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Burton, town councillors and staff, as well as members of the community. I first want to comment uh, about the younger demographic coming to Bronte. They will not come if they cannot afford to live here. Bronte Village is ripe for development, and as Councillor Robinson has stated in numerous Let's Talk Oakville publications, Bronte is on fire. It is very important, however, that the Bronte village that we as residents enjoy does not go up in flames. Through Bronte's reincarnation, if you will, it is important to nurture, conserve, and enhance the historic lakeside village character of Bronte by promoting a predominantly low-rise and pedestrian-oriented built form along Lakeshore Road West and provide a sensitive transition between the concentration and buildings within and adjacent to the village. If these statements sound familiar, it is because they are written in the o livable Oakville plan. If these and other similar statements are the town's objectives, then it begs the question as to why the Simjean proposal could be considered as a possible solution to this particular corner in Bronte Village. To understand the site and the surrounding Bronte Village, one has to be in the community. A person can only truly know something by experiencing it. As it is proposed now, the Simjean building will become a wall, physically dividing the community's sight lines and views. If one heads along Marine Drive, 
Heads west along Marine Drive between Third Line and East Street, they will come to a curve in the road where the property, the Simjean property is directly in front of them. This portion of Marine Drive offers a grand view of sky and sunset between the lighthouse and the Oakville Senior Citizens Residence. Even from ground level, one can see the top of the Amica building located on 160 Bronte Road. This means that it is not actually a building, rather the open space between buildings that is a link between the east and west ends of the Bronte Village area. This space is a connection within the community as well as a vital connection to nature for anyone walking along Marine Drive and for the many residents in low-rise and high-rise homes along that portion of the road. It is a similar case for those looking from the opposite direction. Continuing west on Marine Drive and closer to the site are two more properties that will lose out on connection to nature. These properties are 2220 Marine Drive and the Reflection Bay Townhouse Complex. Continuing even closer and directly adjacent to the site are the Lighthouse, the Oakville Seniors Residence, as well as the Group Home. Here, the wall created by the Simjean proposal will not only cut off panoramic views, but would severely decrease the amount of sunlight reaching these buildings and outdoor, outdoor spaces. While the group home houses active youth on a temporary basis, the lighthouse and the seniors residence is home to many citizens that are not so young. Some have lived in the lighthouse for decades. They spend a lot more time at home and especially in the winter rely on the sunlight and views of the community and the people watching to aid in having healthier days. These important contributors to mental health and well-being do not have age limits either and are critical to anyone at any age with any lifestyle in order to benefit from the healing properties of connecting to nature. In this day and age, how can anyone simply disregard the consideration of mental and emotional health for any individual? I attended the public meeting on January 27, 2016 at Kiwi Park and heard the architect state that the tower portion of the building would not be noticed. His reasoning is that he believes that everyone only focuses on things at ground level. This, unfortunately, is the mentality of people used to commuting in a city or who are focused on their handheld device, not someone who actually lives in Bronte Village. Here, the residents look up and around. They will notice a wall. They will notice their loss of privacy, their loss of sunshine, their loss of views, and their loss of the connection to the community and to nature. Also at the January 27th meeting at Kiwi Park, I listened to the architect speak about the building's design. I came to understand the design ideal and can agree that there may be nothing like it elsewhere in Canada. However, this design does not at all fit into the context of Bronte Village or Oakville and would be better suited in a large city. Although the architect did touch on the arrangement of balconies and their supposed greenery being the blend between single family homes and high rise buildings in the area, between backyards and built form, he did not meet the fundamental criteria of the livable Oakville plan concerning the low-rise built form along Lakeshore Road aspect, as well as the sensitive transition part. Someone may say that the two-story podium provides the transition, but in actuality, it is insufficient. The proposed facade of the building merely paints a picture on a canvas instead of applying that transition in true built form. This could be achieved by way of creating terraces of the stories of the building and incorporating common space greenery and green roofs throughout. These elements could be maintained by a condo corporation instead of relying on the individual owners and tenants. If it becomes the responsibility of the independent person, it can be guaranteed that it will not look nothing like the concept drawings. The building would obviously have to be a lot shorter in order to effectively achieve the terracing, but such design elements would not only permit the building to be more sustainable, but be more cohesive to the neighboring community. Instead of building an extremely large wall, the visual connection as well as that of the built form would be maintained. For this gateway project, the urban square is located at the northwest corner of the site. Typically, when people are invited into a space, they are met with, met with a welcome, a sort of embrace, if you will. As can be visualized, an embrace creates a shape of obtuse angles, allowing the visitor to enter with ease. The design of some of the commercial space for the, this proposal is one of acute angles and does not welcome the outside community. If this square is meant as a gathering space with views within the community, 
It offers only a view of the intersection and no hint of the community beyond or lake just down East Street. This does not provide a connection to the neighborhood. In the planning justification report is a statement that the building's orientation on the site maximizes solar access for future residents. Again, what about the solar access for existing residents? This proposed building is not the only thing in existence in the neighborhood, but the design of it seems to be entirely egocentric. Oddly though, the proposed building design does not seem to care about its own residents either. Besides the close proximity to the neighbors, the most accessible weather protected amenity space is completely blocked from the most important view this site has to offer, which is the western view. The mezzanine amenity space will be in the sh in shadow at the most popular times of the late afternoon and evening of the warmer months of the year. The rooftop amenity space will not have natural, sh natural shading at all, and as existing residents in the area know from experience, will be quite windy. Children, being newcomers to the world, are taught to be respectful of neighbors, of those who have come before them. They are taught and learn for themselves that their elders, their parents and grandparents, their teachers and older siblings have wisdom due to life experience. Although children can inject fresh ideas into a situation, they still look towards their elders for guidance, boundaries, and approval because they know there is valuable insight that should not be ignored. This building will be the newcomer in the area and it is highly advisable to respect the community. As it's proposed now, this building will become a wall physically dividing the community's sight lines and views. In the words of Frank Lloyd Wright, the renowned American architect, a doctor can bury his mistakes, but an architect can only advise his clients to plant vines. Cutting edge architects such as Danish, I apologize if I get his name wrong, but Bjark Ingels are looking for alternatives to the traditional tower on podium scenario. They don't believe it's enough anymore. If Oakville wants Bronte Village to be progressive, why not promote it wholeheartedly and insist on authentic, sustainable, and forward-thinking designs? A building does not have to stand out to be those things. The idea can be nicely summarized in the words of Moshe Safdi, a prominent modern-day architect. He says, I want my buildings to take root and look as if they've always been there. It isn't about pastiche or adapting what's already there. It's about trying to blend the future and the past. Thank you. Thank you very much for your information. Uh, Councillor Elgar, I think, has <laughs> some kind of question for you. The question is, how many stories would you like to see? There? <laughs> I think you've had time to anticipate that might yeah, be the question. The MU1 zoning. MU1 zone? Yeah. OK. One other question. Who was it that said you will not notice the height? The architect at the public meeting. Thank you. Actually, sorry, it was you will not notice the tower. Right. Yeah. Was the words. You yes. Yeah. Thank you. He he raised his hand on your version of it, though, Councillor. So I think you're okay. <laughs> he understood your intent. Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation, please? Next delegation is Brian Henderson. Uh, Welcome, Mr. Henderson. You take your time. The last thing we need is a spill on the way. Going down slopes. Boy, all of a sudden. I fall. You're no, I get again. going. I get going too fast, and then I can't stop. Well, anyway, we look forward to what but you I, have to tell us. Anyway, I'm not even here for me. I'm, uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm speaking for my neighbor who is out of country, and I only got this a little while ago, and then I jiggied it up a little bit, and so I'm reading this on uh, her behalf, and, uh, and so I'll just give you what she has to say, and I, do, I should mention the fact that I, she's speaking about older people, and I'm old, and, uh, and a member in good standing of the senior citizens in Walker's jaywalking and Bronte community, so <clears throat> I qualify. Anyway, to uh, uh, Mayor Burton, members of council, and others in the room who are interested, 
Um, this is on behalf of uh, Cindy Good, who's my next door neighbor in, at 2263 Marine Drive. I am a Canadian citizen who has returned and chosen to live in the quaint village of Bronte after some times overseas in Australia, as my mother's health is failing due to dementia and has recently been placed in a nursing home. I have asked Brian Henderson to read this letter on my behalf. Initially, when hearing about the development and the allocated town, Oakville Town Plan height limitations, I wasn't greatly concerned as it wisely placed a four to a possible 10 story limitation that sensibly addresses the issue of the number of buildings in close proximity to each other. As such, I was frankly astounded at the proposal of a more modern quote unquote Miami looking super tower of 20 stories to overshadow the Lighthouse Aberdeen House facility for mentally ill youth and the Oakville Senior Citizens Residence. I was frankly curious that the elected councillors would be leaning towards a backflip on their own well-researched, recommended, and oft-quoted town plan. But back to the other front that is actually dearer to my heart, the effect on the people in the nursing home adjacent to the development proposed, which is more in my field for two reasons. My mother, as I have mentioned, is in a nursing home with dementia, and my balcony at Marine Drive overlooks the Oakville Senior Citizens Residence, as does mine, by the way, and you really have to be there to hear this. Many of time over the summer, we hear beautiful music and gaze down to the Oakville Seniors Residence where the seniors gather outside to listen to a live band and enjoy a barbecue and get, get up to dance and even sing along. It is a pleasant and beautiful scene to behold. I have spoken to many residents there on my morning walks and they love the green, the light, and the open air, and the ability to see the escarpment and even the lake. Personally, I have also had more working uh, arrangements in this area with hospitals, mental health, and aged care facilities in my career, working on billion dollar developments for major hospitals in Adelaide, North Sydney, and over 200 other facilities managed by Ramsey Healthcare, in Australia. In every development, best practiced was the paramount concern by the local town or city councils, a best practice designed for the ultimate care of the patients. A lot of evidence data and research exists around the design of nursing homes, mental health facilities, and aged care institution, institutions. I shared these documents with the town clerk by email but would like to, the following points noted specifically. All United Kingdom, Canadian, Australian, and European research clearly points to the fact that natural light and a clear view is needed for the health of the aging population. Look it up, www.dementia.stir.ac.uk. I provide the website information for all those who would like to read more about it. As stated, quote, it is discriminatory to fail to meet the needs of people with dementia and the old age in general. They should be given the same priority as those of other groups. In fact, this sector of our population more than any other would require. Higher than normal levels of light to make sense of their environment. Natural light, not electric. A quiet environment with extra attention paid to acoustics twice the amount of lighting than normal, and again, natural for their, boy, I didn't put this word, circadian rhythms. I have no idea what a circadian rhythm is. I thought it was one of those little bugs that go all the time, but apparently not. Circadian rhythms and vitamin D requirements and a view out of the windows. It's something to actually watch as it is life enhancing and so many spend so much time just looking out their windows. Without a doubt, this development takes away some of this from OSCR, the Aberdeen Mental Health Housing Facility, and the Aging Tower. This is truly an injustice in my mind and extremely disappointing. And so I ask that I be their voice tonight. I truly hope that others in the audience will also think about their aging parents and their own aging and stand up for their rights. And it's signed, uh, Cindy Good, 2263 Green Drive. And I thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> it certainly illustrates, oh God. if it doesn't illustrate anything else, it illustrates the incredible depth 
and breadth of knowledge that we find in Oakville residents. Who would have thought we've learned so much? Planners, we all know, and I, I've learned from you that there's a thing called sensitive land uses. I think you just heard a very interesting argument about uh, how we treat some, apparently some sensitive land uses are more sensitive than others. And so that was a fascinating little uh, nugget. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? The next delegation is Hart Jansen, who is here to speak on behalf of Jonathan McNeese, also resides at 2263 Marine Drive. Mr. Jansen, uh, it's good of you to take time off from the campaign trail, and uh, we look forward to uh, your relative's information. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jonathan McNeese is a, is a good friend of mine, and uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a humble resident of Ward 2. Um, it's my pleasure to serve as a proxy for Jonathan McNeese, who owns property to the south of the uh, proposed development site. Um, and it's my pleasure not only because I'm a, I'm a good friend of his, but because I agree wholeheartedly with his submission. Um, I will proceed to read the delegation in the voice of Jonathan McNeese. Good evening, Your Worship, uh, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan McNeese. I'm a property owner at 2263 Marine Drive. I apologize that I could not be here in person as I am out of the country, but I thank you for taking my delegation by proxy. I have spent the better part of my life living in Bronte and wish to give you my personal opinion about this application before you as a property owner and someone who is concerned about the future of the village of Bronte. My family has been in Bronte for seven generations, dating back to the 1860s, and my grandparents especially Bill and Donna Hill helped give Bronte some of its historic charm, sense of community, and helped preserve many of Br Bronte's historical buildings. And I'm, I'm just going to interject an editorial note uh, with, with Jonathan's permission in real time. And that is that uh, the earlier comment by Mr. Hassett uh, took the name of Bill Hill, Jonathan's grandfather, in vain, who would never in eternity have been in favor of this type of development, quite the opposite. Back, back to, back to uh, Jonathan McNeese. I have a master's degree. I, I think we knew that. Okay. <laughs> just, just saying. I have a master's degree in urban planning, and my career has allowed me to contribute to cities of all types, including Toronto, Edmonton, and Buffalo, New York. I first got my passion for planning right here in Bronte when the Bronte Quadrangle was up for development over 10 years ago. I have sat on several local committees and councils such as the Bronte District Advisory Committee, the Bronte Historical Society and the Halton Food Council and have recently been engaging with local residents about the Lake East proposed development. I must say that I am encouraged by the fact that well over 500 residents have voiced their opposition to this development through petitions, surveys, open houses, and public meetings. I wish to speak to you tonight about two points related to whether or not this proposal before you represents good planning for the village of Bronte. In addition to the zoning and bylaws that are in place, the litmus test for a project of this scale and impact should be, does it represent good planning for the community? Keeping in mind that decisions on projects of this scale are 100-year decisions and that they set a precedent for the village of Bronte, the town of Oakville, and beyond. Even if they do not set precedent in zoning code, they do in practice, especially in regard to the OMB. Decisions must be well thought out and not a knee-jerk reaction because we are trying to reach growth target numbers or obtain Section 37 bonusing allowances or any other short-term gain. In my opinion, this proposal as it stands does not represent good planning, and I will highlight two reasons why. Number one, the over-intensification of a site that's too small. The proposed parcel of land is about one quarter the size of any similar development in the area, and this type of over-intensification is typically seen in big cities like Toronto or New York. Additionally, this type of architecture 
commonly referred to as Starchitecture, is intended to make the architect and developer renowned, at, in this case, at the expense of the local community. Bronte already has its Starchitecture in the shores and doesn't need another unusual building. Further, this applicant wishes to be compensated for his architecture through bonusing provisions instead of a true community benefit as Section 37 bonusing is intended to do. The visual obstruction of this 20-story building would be visible from almost 30 kilometers away. Is this the landmark that Bronte wants to be known for? A project like this belongs in Toronto, New York, or maybe Dubai, not in the village of Bronte. The site is so small that the applicant has had to angle the building diagonally on the site to fit the number of units he desires, which in turn elongates the building and almost doubles the size of the visual obstruction and increases the shadowing effect. The applicant, as stated, would need five stories of underground parking, deeper than any development at Oakville, and the site would not be able to pr provide any surface level parking for its commercial space. As we have learned from the shores, retail customers don't use underground parking and will be forced to take up spots wherever they can find them. Good planning means that a development must be suitable for the site that is being built on and for the community that it is being built in. This proposed development is neither suitable for the site nor appropriate for the village of Bronte and by no means is this pro project a gateway for the village. So number two why, uh, reason why it's not suitable, the livability of the village of Bronte. Oakville strives to be the most livable town in Canada so, so much so that its official plan is called Livable Oakville. So what does livability mean for Bronte and what impact would this have on its residents? Livability in the broadest sense considers our built and natural environment, our economic prosperity, our social stability and equity, and our cultural and recreational possibilities. In my opinion, this proposal does not make any significant contribution to Bronte's livability, it instead makes it worse. Almost all of Bronte's tall buildings offer green space as a buffer around the buildings. Setbacks between buildings that minimize visual obstruction and shadowing effects, and anything that adjoins the main commercial district along Lakeshore Road is either less than four stories or stepped back to feel less intimidating for pedestrians. Increasing height to 20 stories along Bronte's main commercial district sets a dangerous precedent not only for Bronte, but also other commercial districts in Oakville, including Kerr Village and downtown Oakville. In addition, if this project is approved, property values of any developable lands would skyrocket so that only, the only viable option is a 20-story building or higher. Many towns and cities have made this mistake so I ask you not to set this dangerous precedent. We should also think about those who may not be represented at this meeting tonight. For example, next door to this site is a group home for youth, and adjacent to that is one of our best seniors facilities, although I think that one was covered off well by the previous uh, delegate. Is this what's best for them? What I am for is responsible development. Bronte can take on its fair share of new residents and has more than enough room for consistent medium scale density along its commercial core, which helps create an active and vibrant atmosphere and some higher densities at appropriately sized sites, like the already approved revitalization at Bronte Village Mall. There is no rush to take on new development at all costs. Again, this is a 100 year decision that you have to make for this proposed project. Good town planning takes time. Do not be desperate for growth. Let's make this an opportunity to build a better Bronte. You only get one chance to do it right. Thank you for the time, uh, taking the time to listen to my delegation. And I look forward to addressing this matter in person when it comes to full council. And uh, an addendum in anticipation of <laughs> Councillor Elgar's uh, uh, question. Sorry, I, I have it here. Uh, so uh, Mr. McNeese feels that 
Main Street 1 is appropriate for transition to Lakeshore. And the only question should be whether this development deserves any bonusing. Keep in mind the proposal calls for 10 foot ceilings, which would make a six story building feel, feel like and obstruct the views uh, as if an eight story building. And that concludes Mr. McNeese's remarks. Thank you very much for bringing them to us. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? The next delegation you, is I Ted Walker. Mr. Walker? Maybe you a copy of when I came in. Okay. All right. Thanks. Welcome, Mr. Walker. Council looks forward to your information. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Council, consider me your break. You see, I come empty handed. I'm here. The I could have used your uh, suggestion right off the bat if the question is being asked, you know, pass and go home. But the, my counselor, Sean O'Meara, over there asked the question, and I didn't really care for the answer, so I'm going to ask it again in a sense. I live in the Oakville Senior Citizens Residence. It's a wonderful place to live. I'm not sure the exact count, but I believe there's probably between three and 400 people that live there, all seniors, of course. The vast majority of them do not drive. And more than half of that all use walkers. One of their main pleasures or, yeah, pleasures is walking. And to, Bronte has all the shops that are all walkable too. So they go out the front door and they turn and they walk over and there's E Street with the stoplight. They're all familiar with it. They all use it. Now with this construction goes on, I'm sure and I'm positive and I will bet on it that as soon as the construction starts, the walls go up and the sidewalk is closed off. I say this because you can take any spot in Oakville under construction and that's what they do. The first thing that goes up the sidewalk goes out of commission and it's closed, period. Now you're talking the Lake Shore and East Street. The people going out there, where are they going to go? There's only one spot left to go and that's straight across the Lake Shore in the traffic. Uh, from the answer we received, uh, it's all going to be looked after and there's going to be a roof over and everything. There's no way that when that construction starts that the wall is going up and the sidewalks are going to be closed. Just check all the other areas. So that's my main concern. Uh, not for myself, really, because I drive, but the majority of people are out there and the pleasure, I don't know where they're going to go um, unless you put in a, a walk across, right across in front of the building. I'm going to get you a better answer. All right. I, I hope so. Commissioner, not to put you on the spot or anything, but <clears throat> does a builder have an absolute right to take over our sidewalk and deny it to the public? Uh, no, there's a temporary street occupation permit that they're required to um, get from the town. Uh, normally at site plan process, there is a, um, uh, through our development engineering group, we look for opportunities to ensure that the pedestrian safety can be maintained at all times. And so that when we receive that temporary street occupation permit, we have a context in which to deal with permitting it or not. So I've seen uh, a sidewalk created, if you will, beside the existing sidewalk <laughs> next to the hoarding and, and with the protective uh, covering over the top of the walkway thus created uh, many times in my life. Our planning director indicated that he expected that we'd be able to do that. Do you have any reason to cast any doubt on our ability to require that? Mr. Mayor, I have no reason to doubt that we couldn't require um, to re maintain the pedestrian access through that site in some manner. Uh, to accommodate the residents in the area, particularly given the nature of the residents in the area. Right. And, and you're not saying send them across the street, in the middle of the street. You're talking about what I'm talking about, a covered walkway along the construction. Yes, and that level of detail we'd look at we, as we move further down uh, the uh, 
construction path. But yes, I'm confident we could maintain that. I hope that helps. I we don't always get such good answers. I'm, that's very, exactly what I was expecting. And if this project goes through, um, you'll find out it's a lie. Well, it will not be done. That sidewalk will be closed. And then there'd be a real problem with the people going across here. Oh, well, we own the street. And it's, in my view, it's our absolute power to decide whether or not we let somebody take it over. Well, I hope you back me. Because that sidewalk is going to be closed if this construction goes on. You and I will take a walk on it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're not approving anything yet. They've got to prove I, that this, this is, is good planning. Case. Just in case, Your Honor. Okay. But if it is done... I know that's what's going to happen. Tell you what, we'll go for the walk. If, if it's, as you say, I'll buy when we get to the coffee shop. And if it's, as, as I say, you'll buy the coffee. Well, why don't we go farther down the road to coach and Ford? <laughs> it's a deal. I was afraid to ask. I'll drive. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate the opportunity to inject a little humor tonight. Madam Clerk, if we... Haven't offended everybody by that. Would you call the next uh, delegation? Next delegation is Thank Margaret you, Mr. Walker. Marland. Hello, ma'am. Welcome, Ms. Marlin. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. I would like to just start by saying that I have never, I've, as you know, spent probably thousands of hours in similar meetings. I have never heard such impressive delegates. They, and, and what was very evident tonight was that the fact that there were so many young people. Now, if you're 82, you can, of course, refer to young people as seniors as well. But these young people tonight were very impressive and had really done their homework on be part on part of the communities. Well, I, I accept your compliment to Oakville, and it means more than people might know because Mrs. Marlin is a long-serving former member of the legislature from Mississauga. So we're being paid a compliment by our neighbor, our former neighbor, and welcome. <laughs> but of course, Hazel taught me everything I knew first. <laughs> Um, this term, uh, which is new, of course, to me, is the, the Provincial Policy Statement, which is, um, as uh, Sean explained to me, is the, the province saying, thou must do, etc., within the planning scope and responsibility of the town. And um, I'm wondering whether intensification is has to be tied to something else, because obviously I haven't studied this. I mean, would they start intensifying East Oakville, for an example? That would be a question that we've got quite a lot of condominiums and apartments already here. Why not on the east side? There was land still in Oakville right up to Winston Churchill Boulevard. Well, I would put it to you that the answer is very easy to understand. Um, the province has given uh, population targets to the different uh, parts of the GTAH. And in Halton, they've been distributed among the four constituent municipalities. And within Oakville, We've identified six uh, intensification zones or growth uh, zones. And uh, Brawny is one of the smallest and the largest of all are in the east. So uh, point taken but already looked after would be the, the way to answer it. The, the, the population numbers and intensification that are provided for in our official plan where were the result of extensive consultation with the people of Brawny who wanted that degree, not more, not less, in the name of uh, vitality and, and business district success. And the study that's going on right now is considering whether to increase that a little bit on the, on the lakeshore. The application before us is before us because an applicant has an absolute right under the Planning Act to ask for anything they want whether it fits our official mm -hmm. plan or not. Mm -hmm. And frankly, uh, the job they have 
is to persuade us that we should change our official plan to suit their desire. And uh, the information that we get from you and the other members of the public is all about uh, reinforcing our perception of what the community's vision of itself is, whether it's changed since we put the plan in place five or six years ago or, or not. And in fact, what we've heard to a great uh, preponderant degree is that that vision has not changed. And, uh, and if it is changing at all, it's only changing from the MU1 designation to the MU2. Maybe, I, there's, not, there's no unanimity on that. And uh, apart from one resident and the applicant, we haven't really seen any other sign of shift to the uh, MU4 high intensity designation. And, and the case to prove that that's what we should do, that's for them to, to bring to our staff. And then our staff have to persuade us with their recommendation uh, before the end of May uh, as to what the, whether to accept or reject the application. So does that help? That does help. Um, I, I also, I was wondering, having not, I haven't attended um, a planning and development meeting. I haven't attended any meetings in these chambers before, but we obviously have a, a very impressive team of people who I presume and we, we already have the architect identified by his own volition. And uh, so I'm wondering whether, do, will, you can, will your staff be continuing to meet with them, but we won't be part of the, the opportunity for us to be part of the exchange before the final decision? Is that available to us? So there's been these public meetings that you may have heard referred to uh, in Jan or one in January. Uh, there's been a I was there quite a lot of, of uh, information provided by email and letter and and then there's tonight which seeks to draw out any more input and then when the recommendation report comes in May that too will be an opportunity for public comment pro and con and uh, if tonight is any judge there may be um, somewhat less pro than con but you never know but the countdown starts, or well, ends, I gather, the 12th of June. So if that final recommendation from staff, with or without amendments, comes forward, I think certainly that question was raised tonight. And I think we're at the point in the meeting where we, the public, need to know and clearly understand what the next steps are and who we can expect to hear from and what opportunity we'll have because when you refer to the board um, obviously some of us know it's the Ontario Municipal Board and some of us also may know <laughs> that um, municipalities across the province uh, they're not really happy with having Ontario Municipal Board action um, and it, they've often talked about you know having a government that would do away with it well we've had three different governments in the last 30 years and uh, nobody's done away with it so um, are you able to um, I, I mean we talked we heard about this meeting in May but I'm concerned about the response time which was raised but I didn't think was answered, at least I didn't quite understand it. The Planning Act, in its infinite wisdom, yes. grants 180 days to make a decision once the applicant's materials are deemed complete. And on or about June 12th, that, that clock reaches the end. And we will make a decision before then. And if it's not a decision that the applicant can live with, I rather imagine there will be an attempt to appeal it to the, or there will be an, an appeal to the board and we will battle it out there, depending on, uh, of course, uh, whether they're happy with the decision or not. Okay, well then my final question um, to you, Mr. Mayor and members of council is, if um, your staff in combination with their future meetings in the next short period of time, um, accept some of the suggestions that have been brought to you tonight. Um, 
does that mean that going forward you would have someone representing what the opinion of Oakville is at the board, or do it, does it then depend on those of us that are lay people in planning dealing with fighting for what has been brought to you tonight? Could you have, would you hire a lawyer as a municipality? I know it's been done. And so, so I, the, answer, the answer is um, no community is more famous for hiring top-notch legal assistance to conduct its cases at the board. I was once told by a former chair of the board that they had seriously debated renaming the board the Oakville Municipal Board. Great. Great. Well, that's about the best news we could have tonight. <laughs> so uh, we can go home and sleep, right? You can... You can trust council to make the best possible decision when it has all the necessary information with which to make one. That's our mantra, and, and we've done pretty good by it, I think. So thank you very much, though. I think it's helpful, actually, to ventilate those questions, and good on you for helping us do that. Well, thank you for the work that you're all doing as a team. Councillor Elgar, he's going to ask you okay, something about you mean, My question is, <laughs> what do you want to see there? Number of stories. Um, M me personally? Yes. Well, I, I would, ideally, I would like to see what is currently available without any bonusing and special concessions. That's when you get to the building. At the moment, my initial concern is the safety of the approach of using that land the way, I mean, there is a right goes with ownership of property. I'm not being ridiculous about this, but I, as far as the maximum height, I would certainly agree with what has been stated tonight. Okay, but so I, you're saying four stories? No, I didn't. I didn't hear that in the majority of the opinions. Tonight. No, no, I'm four asking story. your opinion. No, I wouldn't say four stories. Okay, so what are you saying? Well. So the existing zoning yes. is four with the possibility of a bonus of two, or a total of six. Yes. And, and Alan has been collecting a bit of a poll here, um, and the, uh, I guess the answers have been MU1, MU2, and MU4. But I don't, I'm happy to say six, but I'm, re I'm realistic enough to know that it's how that is administered in terms of the lot coverage. I mean, if you, we, the, the greatest builder, in my opinion, that we have had in Bronte, and I've, I've only been here seven years, is uh, Mr. John Gregory, who has done the four buildings. And th I'm in the oldest building, and I think it's 36 years old. And the amazing thing about those four buildings being the height that was permissible then, of course, since, since then, that's why you have the other buildings in the area that are so high. We've learned more about putting high-rise buildings. Of course, Toronto hasn't learned it in their downtown city core. They're just putting in as many as they can. But in in good planning, I believe, in Ontario, we are starting to recognize the value of Lake Ontario, for example, but other even rivers and setbacks, the technical side of planning that I'm not a planner, and I, so I can't, I can't describe it properly, but I really feel that it is site-specific, and I do think that what has been said tonight by at least five people is absolutely true about the prominence of that corner being protected and putting up anything. I mean, if you say um, a number of floors or stories and you still only have one entrance in and out, it won't deal with the hazard of the dealing with the traffic in and out. With Because you, that's all with, uh, if you include a two-story commercial retail, then you've got people that still have to get in and out of parking, and those are short-term visits. They're not people that are going home for the morning or, I mean, the usage of the 
entrance and exit is a hazard in itself and it just increases with the number of floors in my opinion. So what's your number of stories? <laughs> you still haven't answered specifically yet. Are you saying four, six, eight, ten? If I had a choice, I would say six. Thank you. You do have a choice. I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marlin, for your time and your information. It's a pleasure. Thank you all for your hard work on our behalf. You're, you're most welcome. Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation, please? Next delegation is Gary Reed. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, going once. We, we know Mr. Reed, and we don't see Mr. Reed. All right. Somebody else. Anybody else like to? Uh, pardon? Is there another one? Yes. Oh, I beg. I I went too soon. Next one, please. Uh, Clive Martin. Mr. Martin. There he is. Welcome, Mr. Martin, and Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Um, my number's four. Mr. Elgar. <laughs> um, a, a man who knows how to cut to the chase. <laughs> and, and I will be brief as well because um, I think that the issues around this development and its suitability for the site and all of that has been eminently covered very eloquently by the people who came before me. So I can't add any more to that. <coughs> Excuse me. My concern is, I guess, in terms of the precedence of a substantial development of this property uh, has on the other four corners of this location. In particular, the one across the road, which is currently a 7-Eleven, and the TD Canada Trust. Um, I should say at this point, I'm a resident of St. Anne's Court, um, and uh, I have had some feedback from my co-residents there in regard to this. We do have some other concerns about those properties, but given that a developer can come along and present such an incredible stretch past what the Liverpool Oakville plan says regarding this site. I can't imagine what they would do to the properties opposite. And of course, in terms of their proximity, the impact of St. Anne's Court. So it's really the precedent that I'm concerned about. The precedent for that particular property from a personal point of view, but also I think as has been expressed uh, by other people, the precedent for the rest of Lakeshore and how many more buildings can you build to that size. So that really is, is my main contribution. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that and for answering the councillor's poll. I know that uh, precedent value will be something that the planning staff will, re will report against in uh, May. Thank you. So uh, appreciate your time. That's your list. All right, we've come to the end of the formal list, and I'll now, as I promised, ask if there are any members of the public here with additional information for council. Yes, sir, please come up and share your information. Introduce yourself, if you'd be so kind, and uh, for the clerk, and, and we look forward to your information. Good evening, Your Worship, councillors, members of the public. My name's Ty Goss. I'm a resident of uh, Oakville, Bronte. Um, I had written some, some words down, but everything's been said already. So what I'd like to do instead is, uh, in addressing council and, and town staff, ask some questions based on the feedback that we've had tonight. Um, so my first question is, could town staff clarify the date regarding the 180-day the 180 uh, 180 clock? It's my understanding that the date is June the 8th and not June the 12th. Through your worship, yes, the, that is the date. In my understanding, the June twelfth date is a scheduled P and D council uh, meeting date in June. So, had we gone to that date, we would have potentially missed an opportunity to have council be informed on this and make a decision. Okay, so it's June the twelfth. June the twelfth is planning and development council date. Actually, it, it's the, that's the thirteenth. Thirteenth. The clerk advises. The is the nature of your question whether we will act before the clock runs out? Is that your concern? No, no. My the question is when when does the clock run out? Okay. To the best of our information, it's the eighth of June. Your calculation and their calculation is the same. Spot on. Thank you. 
Um, my next question is, would it be possible for the town of Oakville to conduct the two independent studies called for by the BVRA before a decision is made? Um, Madam Commissioner? Yes, I think the engineering study and the traffic study were the two studies that had been asked for. I think through the discussion there's also been um, requests for shadow studies as well. Um, so all of that information will be requesting updates so that we have a complete package in order to report to Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my final question is, um, uh, would the Town of Oakville issue its recommendation report seven days prior to the statutory meeting uh, for the public review? Madam Commissioner. I believe the question was whether or not the information was available prior to the public meeting. Whether right. or not seven, public seven days. Seven days. But what we're looking for is an opportunity to review the information before it comes before Council. So our agenda dates for um, Planning and Development Council are about 10 days before the meeting. Um, so you'd have, in effect, two weekends to review the material before it would be heard at this committee, at this Council. And I'm assuming the, the, the regular modal modalities would be used in terms of disseminating information? Yes, the website would be available, and our normal uh, practice is anyone who has attended the PIM, the public information meetings, or have signed up at this meeting here through the clerk, uh, we send notice of when the recommendation report would be heard at um, Council. Okay. Your Worship, Councillors, thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. They help illuminate how the process works, and I appreciate that. Anyone else with questions or information? I was, on, I was asking for information before, but questions are good too. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much. I've asked three times. I'll confine the matter to the table. What? The oh, sorry. The applicant is here. Yes. <laughs> I asked if there were any more. Anyway, I got confused. I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Alan Young, partner in Weston Consulting. Uh, I'm. Uh, Working with Weston Consulting on the file, yes. But you're Alan Young? I'm Alan Young, yes. Mr. Young, Council looks forward to your information. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Uh, we also have the architect, and both um, he and I requested delegations this evening. And I, I believe we have um, part of our presentation in the PowerPoint. So I'll just. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, I'm going to skip some of the introductory material I had because you've already heard a lot of background information. I'd like to go right to a uh, photo of the site um, showing the, the former Hasty Market building and the financial services building behind it. That's where the subject property is located. To the right is the 17-story Lighthouse Tower building. And behind, you can see the Oakville Seniors residence. The next slide is a close-up of the rear lot line of the property. It's standing across East Street from the subject site, looking at the former Hasty Mark building on the left, uh, looking at the parking deck for the lighthouse. The lighthouse itself with its balconies is on the right. And again, the Ontario, or sorry, the Oakville Senior Citizens Residence is in the distance. Uh, there was a question about setbacks. The parking structure for the lighthouse is set back zero meters, as is the parking from the common property line with the subject property. And the deck is the location of the, of the sun deck and the pool that we've heard about. And I have another photo of that later. Context, the subject property is outlined in red. The boundary of the growth area is in orange. So the site is located within the growth area, of course. Um, this particular height uh, drawing shows the heights of the buildings in the vicinity. Lighthouse is 17 stories to the south. Sir Richard Towers is 16 stories on the west side of East Street to the, to the west, to the southwest of the subject property. Oakville Senior Citizens Residence is nine stories and 12 stories. And it's clear on the lake is 15 stories, both towers. And it's clear two on the lake, both towers are 22 stories. Oakville Apartments 
is 19 stories. So I think it's fair to say in terms of the number of stories, the, the proposed building falls within that range that exists in, the, in this area. Uh, as you're also aware, uh, there are other high-rise buildings in the area. That is the, the Shores building, which is 10 stories, not quite as high. Uh, also at Bronte Village Mall, there are approvals for 10 story and 14 stories in the Bronte Village Main Street area, but those have not yet proceeded to construction. Uh, given the pattern of building height in the area, in the form of tall buildings to the south, southeast and southwest, and the approvals for tall buildings at the west, west gateway to Bronte Village, we think the subject lands are an appropriate location for a tall building, being located at the Gateway entrance to the village, one with a strong vertical emphasis, such as what is proposed here, uh, close to Lakeshore, because that's what the official plan is looking for, buildings that relate to the public sidewalk and that have sidewalk-oriented commercial activity, an, an urban feel rather than a suburban landscape feel. And, of course, we think that the strikingly contemporary architectural design that is proposed is one of the strong merits of the project, uh, warranting favorable consideration of, of additional height. Our application proposes an urban core designation. It's not the first time in Bronte Village, that's where the Shores is. Also, Bronte Village Mall is zoned urban core. Our draft official plan amendment allows up to 20 stories subject to bonusing provisions whereby community benefits would be provided under Section 37 of the Planning Act. As, as a beginning comment, we've said that the architecture of the building plus the um, urban square, which is approximately 300 square meters at the corner, are features that would merit some bonusing. That is only the beginning of the discussion. This, this discussion would occur, as has been explained by your planners, uh, later in the process, once the appropriate parameters for the site have been determined. And that discussion would also take place uh, in the context of a discussion about the parkland contribution. Uh, we think the parkland contribution should be capped. That's why we've put something in the official plan amendment about it. We haven't been definitive to say what we think that should be. Uh, that discussion should take place in parallel with the bonusing discussion. But we th should think there should be a cap because the one hectare for 300 dwelling units in this case would mean a payment of several millions of dollars and in fact would amount to over $50,000 per unit, which we think is too much. So we want to have that, that discussion, which um, quite frankly, uh, a parkland dedication rate of that magnitude simply serves to inhibit intensification, which, that is, which is part of the Pronti vision, in other words, you're genuinely trying to get some intensification there to get more people using the shops. Application of that parkland ratio will inhibit your, your own objective. Uh, the site plan, we've uh, looked at it, shows the, um, the tower, which is diagonal on the site. It's 18 stories mounted on a two-story podium base for a total of 20 stories. Uh, four and a half levels of underground parking. All of the residential units would be in the 18-story tower portion, and the commercial uses and residence amenity spaces would be within the two-story podium. Uh, as encouraged by town policies, there is a, an urban square at the corner. Uh, an urban square is an open space that is landscaped with benches and acts as a focal point for the development. We would suggest that it will enhance the walking environment in this area. And there will be scope also as part of the development approval to get improvements to the boulevard, which will enhance the sidewalk as well and increasing the width as, as the town may desire. Uh, there would also be a, a garden courtyard, a private amenity area for residents and a sheltered area, and two other landscaped areas at uh, two corners of the site. On the amenity terrace at the back, there would be an outdoor area for the residents also on the roof of the tower. Uh, this diagram shows the offset relative to the lighthouse. 
And uh, th thanks to the lady that spoke and, and phoned the town, we had to pick up an error because the, the balconies hadn't been shown on the on the lighthouse. We've added it to this drawing. It's the it's the dash lines, but it shows the uh, the 30 meter offset, which is part of the town's urban design guidelines. Uh, the required distance between high rise towers, which of course is the town standard for achieving appropriate conditions of light and privacy and views. Um, for, for comparison, sorry. The, um, the two buildings of the uh, Oakville Senior Citizens Residence are set back a similar distance, one from the other, uh, 32 meters and 30 meters. The uh, Easterly Senior Citizens Residence is 26 meters from the nearest building of Ants Clare on the Lake. Uh, the two Ants Clare on the Lake buildings are, are 36 meters apart, and the two Ants Clare Okay. Thanks. Oh, thank you. The, the two, and it's clear, two on the lake buildings are 55 meters apart. So I think you can see that a, a 30 meter standard, I mean, it's the town's own standard, but it's even represented in, in what's been built in this area. Uh, and of course, that is many years ago. And at the Bronte Village Mall, the zoning body would require a 20 meter separation between the two towers allowed there. Now, to understand shadow impact, one does have to look what's on the ground. And you've already been told about the, the outdoor deck and the pool for the lighthouse tower. There's the pool there. That's the very large deck. Interesting to hear that was originally a, a tennis court. And, and west of the deck, most of the area south of the site is just outdoor parking. Uh, to the east, there's the, the tree backyard of the group home. Then further east, there's parking and driveway areas for the senior citizens' residents. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no outdoor amenity area in the west side yard of the seniors' residence. Why you... Sorry, to the, to the best of my knowledge, there's no uh, outdoor amenity area in the west side yard of the Oakville seniors' residence. Uh, we did do shadow studies as required by the town. Therefore, the standard three time slots, the two equinoxes, spring and fall, being March and, and September, and then the summer solstice, which is June. And I won't go over in the, in the detail, but most of the shadow cast by this building would go on to the commercial area along Lakeshore to the north and, and to the west. It would uh, swing around. Oops. It would, uh, well, it starts at, for example, on June the 21st, 10 a.m., which is the day of shortest shadow. 10 a.m., going towards the corner. Uh, 12 p.m., a very small shadow on Lakeshore. Uh, 2 p.m., it starts to go on to the group home, out of the front yard of the group home. And then in, by 4 p.m., it's on to the outdoor deck. But as you can see, what's happening is the, the lighthouse tower itself is casting a shadow over that same area. So it's an area that uh, does experience some shadow already, and it's only in the late afternoon that the shadow from the lighthouse tower was, from the proposed tower would start to have an impact. And it's a similar pattern for, for other time frames. Uh, we have, of course, uh, noted a number of comments to the effect that the proposed building design will not fit into the existing community. We, we've heard that at the community meeting. Uh, there's no question, uh, Mr. Mayor, that the proposed design is striking and the building will stand out from its neighbors. Uh, that was deliberate. Uh, we think this is appropriate for a, a gateway site, particularly where you're next to an existing high-rise area and in an area that is well removed from heritage buildings forming part of the original Bronte Village. Uh, the town's own urban design manual encourages creative and innovative building design that produces distinct and attractive buildings which are memorable and foster a distinct identity. And we would suggest that that, that is what Lake and East, the name of the project, would do for Bronte. 
And so, of course, this is in a context where you, you do have a vision for a Bronte village, which is four stories, six stories. Um, those policies have been in place for a number of years. Uh, that growth has not materialized. And if, if the vision isn't resulting in the kind of development that you're, you had originally been seeking, then I think it is time to, to tweak that vision to see if, if something else will work. And we think that on this site, given its gateway location and its adjacency to an existing high-rise area, we think, sorry, we think this is an appropriate place to have this kind of building. Uh, we don't think this sets a precedent for the northeast corner of East and Lakeshore because that site is very close to a stable residential area. Okay. And Sir, you've, you've kind of used up your time limit. Okay. And um, you're going to have another uh, chance at persuading council at the recommendation meeting in any event. And I believe we have some questions for you. Could I ask you to, to bring your, your uh, remarks to a conclusion? Okay, I'll have uh, two points. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, in terms of precedent, I, I don't think you'll have the same thing happening on the other corner because the town's policy for angular planes will come into play, and that will severely restrict building height on the other, other side of the lakeshore. Um, I had come prepared to suggest that, uh, or to express concern about the comment in the staff report that the recommendation report should be delayed until the Bronte review is further advanced, and of course that sounded like very open-ended timing. But now I'm gathering that you're planning to almost accelerate the process rather than decelerate it. And, and um, therefore... I, I'll clarify. Uh, council's going to make this decision, not the board. So if you want to delay, you'll have to give some kind of undertaking to staff that you won't appeal once the clock ticks uh, to finish. But I don't want to negotiate that. Um, I, I only want to make it clear that council is going to make this decision. And that's fine, sir. But I think, you see, the problem is we haven't received any, although we've had the community open house and heard public comments, we have not received any staff comments yet on the application. And for us to begin to move to the next phase of, of discussion with staff, we, we need those comments. We're not, we, we want to move forward and um, we request your assistance in that. I think you can rely on getting their comments. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks. Uh, Councillor Elgar, are you going to ask him the height uh, number? I, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to ask him that question. I think I know the answer. But I am interested in one of your last comments where you said you do believe you, you just want to tweak the number. So your idea of a tweak is going from four stories to 20 stories? That's a tweak in your opinion? It, um, it's a tweak because we're only dealing with this one site. We're not dealing with, with the area as a whole. Got it. That's, that's what I, I think that was the context of my remark. Th thank you. A, Thanks. The good question and a good answer. Councillor Grant, uh, you're next, please. Thank you. I, I appreciate when you say that uh, we're looking for innovative building design. But, but another thing that we do talk about is having like-minded buildings clustered together. So it's possible to be innovative and still be respectful of your surroundings instead of just throwing everything out and throwing up what you'd like. Do you have any comment on that? Um, I think um, on a gateway site, you want to have something that's certainly appropriate for its surroundings. But there's, you know, the, the lighthouse tower itself is a very standard uh, concrete design, four years old. Uh, the other buildings on, um, on Lakeshore in the vicinity on that corner could be anywhere in southern Ontario. There's, noth there's nothing distinctive about them. What this, what this is going to do is create something that is highly distinctive. And I think that's a good thing. And I don't think it'll detract from the uh, amenity of that or the, um, the quality of experience on, in Bronte Village. Very much the opposite. We'll be getting rid of that front yard surface parking and um, vastly increasing the, the quality of the public realm, including you know, landscaping on the street, uh, sidewalks, and so on. So I think it's, it would be a, a major enhancement. Okay. Um, and, and just one thing. It, I noticed a number of builders do this these days, and it kind of really bothers me. Uh, where you've already got registration set up for people to buy condos, 
you've got a marketing team, you've got a sales team in place. I've actually, just while we were talking a minute ago, uh, signed up to get all the floor plans and, and price lists for that. So I, I'm just a little concerned that uh, here we are talking about how nervous you're about how fast we can make a decision, and it looks like you're, you're trying to sell something that doesn't exist. Actually, uh, well, sir, of course, any, if there are changes to the project as we move along, that has to be reflected. But my, my original concern was that everything was going to be deferred virtually sunny die, waiting for the Brontier review to, get, to catch up. That was my concern, going that we were going to go too slow, not too fast. But now, now that we're going to go fast, I'm concerned that I don't have any comments to work with. But, but you've already registered the name Lake and East, and you're already trying to start marketing the building. Um, there are certain economic realities that come into play, I'm afraid. But naturally, the developer can only build what they, he gets approval for. Despite the fact that people might put money down on that. Well, there's, there are warning clauses. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you very much. I, I asked at the beginning, I asked staff about the, um, the setback from the sidewalks and a constant uh, um, reoccurring theme I heard was, again, is this building's going right up to the sidewalk. Um, but if I'm looking in our planning report on page 144 with the renderings, I mean, it looks like there's 20, 30 feet from the sidewalk at any one given Area. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of, of, of definitiveness on where this building is going to touch the sidewalks, how much room is going to be on East Street and Lakeshore, uh, and, and what, um, what y this, this, this concept is actually going to do in terms of the walkability of that corner, because that seemed like it was a reoccurring theme here from our residents about um, not being able to get around on Lakeshore and East Street. I'm hoping you might be able to clarify that for me. Uh, yes, and I would certainly agree, by the way, with the earlier remarks about providing protection for the sidewalk during construction. I had asked the uh, project manager on, for Lake and East about that, and they fully expect there will be a, a protected sidewalk with overhead covering at all times during construction. But in terms of um, location of the existing sidewalk, um, it, uh, see, a road widening has already been taken off the, the easterly property, but not the west, westerly property. So I believe the sidewalk is uh, immediately adjacent to the front lot line on the western portion where the Hasty Mart was. And it's uh, maybe a foot or two off the East Street property line. So the sidewalk is close to the property line. But as the mayor has said, that's public property. I, I understand where the property line is. I'm, I'm wondering where the building's going to go. Okay, sorry. The, um, the tower at the front would have a zero setback from the property line, uh, as would a, a small portion of the podium along Lakeshore. But then the urban square would open up and there would be large setbacks to accommodate the square. Uh, similar to go going around the corner, uh, the podium would have a zero setback from the East Street lot line. And the tower would touch the East Street lot line only at a point. Okay. I and I, I say that because then, you know, the renderings to me that are in this report look deceiving. I mean, you've got you know, some young ladies out there playing, uh, you know, and, and it looks very deceiving. So I just want every, I want to confirm that, that that's going to touch the, 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 the property line, the building on the lakeshore uh, uh, portion. I understand it opens up where the urban square is a little bit, but then down along, along East Street, uh, again, it is, it is accurate uh, where it will be touching um, the, the property line as well. Uh, yeah, so have I answered the question? Sorry. I, 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 I understood you said it touched a certain point on East Street. Yes. And it touched a certain point on Lakeshore. I'm just trying to ask you if the renderings we have in this plan, where it shows, you know, people out schmoozing around out in front on the Lakeshore, is accurate and from what I'm hearing you're saying no that's not accurate so I'm just trying to to, to get some consistency here and what it is I'm looking and what it is that you're telling me sorry I'm not sure which rendering you're looking at is, is the same as this one the um, 
like on the, rent, the view of the ground floor level from, from Lakeshore Road, the one at the top of page four, it shows three people in front of the white screen wall there, and I think they're on standing on the public sidewalk. Okay, so that would be the sidewalk that they would be yeah. on then? Okay. Yes. And then obviously you're getting into the urban square further over from there. Um, um, maybe we should ask the architect about the next one. I'm not sure which angle it's taking. Sure, no problem. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, you can take um, probably not. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Adams? A couple of questions for you. You've got the shadow analysis up there, and I, I want to understand why you believe it's okay or satisfactory to block the amenity space in effect for the entire afternoon um, for the building next door. Um, yes, they've got their own shadow creation uh, mid-afternoon at 2 o'clock, but in effect you create a situation where they, they would have shadow there, therefore from, uh, I'm going to guess at 1 o'clock on, um, for the, the entire afternoon. So they, in effect, would lose sunshine for the entire afternoon instead of what would otherwise normally, I presume it's probably about a two-hour window where they block their own sunlight. I guess they are impacted by their own tower. But if we're looking at the same one, June 21st, yeah, I'm looking at the one that you've got up there right now. Like at 2 p.m., the shadow uh, is only over the front portion of the group home property. So by 4 p.m., the shadow is over the entire uh, outdoor deck of the lighthouse. So it's, it's in between those two times. That so my point is you've, there's a cumulative effect of shadowing. When the building to the south was put in, presumably there was some contemplation of, okay, there's going to be shadowing, it'll be for this period of time in the afternoons from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock or something like that, we can live with two hours worth of shadow. Um, here you've got a situation where you're contemplating adding to their shadow time by adding an additional probably two hours worth of shadow time uh, or more, because I don't know what happens after 4 o'clock, um, but I presume that means that for the rest of the day, there's no sunlight on that corner. And so you you have created a situation, or you would create a situation, where that amenity space would be in shadow from 1 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon on for the rest of the day. Why do you think that's satisfactory? Uh, no, the shadow would, don't, would start later in the afternoon. Your shadow would, but they yes. have existing shadow. Oh, because of their shadow. I'm talking about the cumulative, the cumulative impact right. of the shadow. Right. Well, that, that is a judgment call in terms of what is acceptable for, for shadow impact. If, if the residents, like when, when that outdoor deck was designed, it's hard to say that that designer actually looked at shadow impact. Because um, naturally, if one were concerned about that, they probably would have put that on a different part of the property. But uh, because there is a, an afternoon shadow, shadow impact necessarily from the lighthouse, so it, um, we think because of the duration, the, the extra shadow that is generated would be an acceptable condition for an urban area. Okay, could I ask our staff to consider the issue of cumulative shadow in the review? The other, you have a, a beautiful picture of your building and it's clad in something. Can you tell me what it's clad in? You've got a, maybe you could back up to your, one of your original pictures just so I can tell uh, you that, what uh, I'd like the architect to answer the question okay. on, the on materials. Right, Councillor, we, uh, we've reached that point where the best thing you could do would be to give us I'll a motion, a motion to, to continue the, the meeting until 10.30. Thank 30. you, Councillor. All in favor? Opposed to finish. The witching hour has been averted for 30 minutes. Um, the architect is a registered delegation. You may want to save architecture questions okay. for the architect rather than the planner. Then I'll ask you one planning question, um, and that's my last one. Uh, why not choose a mid-rise building that is in keeping with the existing zoning and official plan? There's a number of uh, buildings of that nature that are around. Some of them look wonderful. Uh, that was the vision of the area originally. Why are you choosing to try to do something quite different? 
Uh, quite frankly, what gave spark to the, the idea of looking at a high rise on this site was its, its gateway location and its adjacency to other high rise. So we, we think those conditions, um, and which are sort of buttressed by other approvals in the area, for example, on Bronte Village Mall, uh, we think that that provides an appropriate context for getting more efficient use of this site. I mean, that's one of the hallmarks of the provincial policy statement is getting efficient land uses in locations that can uh, accept them and sustain them. And uh, this does provide an opportunity to get some desirable growth for Bronte Village, uh, given its particular context. Okay, thank you for your answers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Um, just to be absolutely clear, you, I heard you talk a couple of times about what the bonusing, in your um, opinion, was going to be, what was going to be the benefit, in other words, for the community, other than the design of your building. Uh, the other one was the urban square. Which is, which is a feature of the design of the building, I, I agree. You see, um, now community benefits, of course, would pertain to things that are off-site, uh, and often do apply to things that are off-site, and that's where we need to have the dialogue with the town to identify you know, what is needed in the area. So that really is a, a future discussion. Uh, we only put in our um, draft zoning bylaw the things that we knew that we could bring to the table in terms of on-site design. Uh, there there has, definitely has to be a bigger discussion. Okay, thank you. I won't. Um, Councillor Hutchins and Councillor Wischina, and I remind you guys of the clock. Uh, my question is also slightly to do with shadowing. It's very noticeable if you change the orientation of the building to uh, the other direction, the, the, the afternoon shattering on the other lighthouses, uh, recreational facilities would be significantly reduced. Uh, is this possible, the reason you built it this way was so that your urban square wouldn't get shadowing? So that you were basically throwing the shadow on your neighbors, but... Uh, um, well, the, the reason for that particular diagonal placement is the um, trying to achieve the offset to um, respect the separation distance for the 30 meter separation between high rise towers. So this, this achieves that better if the diagonal goes that way. So it's better for the views from the north side of the lighthouse. So you're telling me if you did, if you did the other direction with the diagonal going the other way, you would be within the 30 meter uh, yes. envelope? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Hutchins. Uh, Councillor Liz Chinna. There were several delegations that uh, noted there might be some issues with digging five stories down for uh, parking. Uh, are there any geological issues in that area because it's so close to uh, the lighthouse uh, uh, property? Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, we did um, commission a geotechnical report. I haven't reviewed that because it's not my area of expertise, but it satisfied my clients that there were no inherent geotechnical issues in terms of um, water table and or soil or, or what have you. And um, there's no question that during a period of construction, one has to be very careful because of the structure, the parking deck structure of the lighthouse has a zero setback from the law line. So that has to be looked at with care. And uh, you know, potential liability issues, it means that the construction has to be closely monitored uh, so are you, are you willing, uh, one of the uh, condominium residents' um, presentation was actually having something on paper that you would be responsible for, or your client would be responsible for um, making sure that it doesn't get busted up? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not my area of expertise, and I'm sure the town, there are standard expectations in terms of how these kinds of situations are managed. It's not an uncommon situation to have... Um, underground parking garages uh, excavated in a zero lot line condition, and, and even where the abutting site is far more intensively developed than, than what we have here. So I think there are standard procedures and, and protocols that can be brought to bear on the situation, and it may not be necessary to craft something special. But that's, you know, that's a matter that can be reviewed. I'm not shutting the door. Alrighty then, given the limited 
time, I'll just ask one question. Uh, we were recently told by the province that they were changing the parkland dedication calculation from one for 300 to one for 500 for cash in lieu and leaving uh, the calculation for land at one for 300. And, uh, and when I questioned this, the province told me that this was their way of encouraging us to take land. They didn't want us taking money. So I wonder, in your interesting approach to parkland dedication, um, if you would uh, uh, work with me for a minute here to describe what would happen if we followed the, uh, the province's apparent preference that we look for land instead of money. Is it the case that at one for 300, 144 units would attract, in theory, a parkland dedication of up to uh, 48 hundredths or almost a half a hectare? Uh, yes. And, and how much land do you have here? It's, uh, well, it's 0.6 of an acre, which is... Um, is it about a quarter or a fifth of a hectare? It's about a quarter, yeah. quarter of a hectare. Yeah. So um, would it be um, too big a stretch to say that you don't have enough land to meet that level of uh, parkland dedication and land? That's correct. The two are totally incompatible. I see. All right. Thank you very much for your information. Okay. And uh, Council will now... Uh, hear from your architect, who uh, certainly you, was a... Are you certain you want to go through a, this? Well, I, I love the forthright way you put your hand up to uh, own the remark you made, and I've always believed that we should own our remarks, so your turn. The worship, councillors. Um. Oh, there it is. All right, I'll try to keep this um, fairly brief. So, so I'm going to hold you to no more than 10 minutes just because at mm -hmm. 10.30 the meeting's over whether we like each other or not. So uh, That's right. I'll make sure you like me by the end of the uh, Perfect opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what can I say to the after, after a day like this? I'm, I'm really going to go through um, some of the decisions and the path of how decisions get made through the design process, whether you buy it or like it. Um, I guess we've heard a lot about liking of it um, over the last three or almost three and a half hours. Uh, I started with a slide that simply shows the, the lay of the land, setbacks, um, daylight triangle, and additional setback that we have to take off the, uh, of the lake shore. And the, um, when we first look at this project, we looked at it as from a perspective of any other tower um, that's built in the greater Toronto area, typically consists of uh, a podium that contains some service and some retail, possibly a little bit of commercial, and um, some residential, uh, up to about four stories. And then the, the tower um, is sort of plonked on top of that um, and goes to whatever height that is. So that's, that's, that's sort of the expe expected model of development that we would see here. Um, I haven't been to Oakville much. That maybe shows uh, through the design. I'm sure residents will agree. Um, prior to this, but I have visited quite a few times since. And the um, one of the things that we've heard uh, was the hasty market was um, an important amenity. And the uh, people would, and we've heard that today as well, people would come down to the hasty market and um, there would be a place of destination. So we, we did take that to heart. Uh, one of the things that we understood from looking at the site is the low-rise nature of Oakville, in particular, uh, as we look to uh, west and northwest and southwest of the site. And if you look at the buildings uh, in that area, they're mostly one and two stories buildings. So that's what we're indicating here with, the, with our sites shown as a white um, parallelogram. And so one to two story typology, as we architect, uh, architects call it, is to the west and, and the uh, north and south of the site. Uh, as many have talked about before, and Alan as well, the, uh, we looked down to the uh, east side and, uh, of, of the site and discovered a number of towers and the, um, of similar height or higher. And the, our in so, so the question to us was how, how does one deal with that dichotomy, um, again, as architect? So that's sort of the area that's covered by towers that are at about 20 stories high. or something is stuck here. 
few of those too. Okay, so that's, um, in essence, that's what it would result in if we're trying to honor the, uh, the height, typology, the size of the, uh, of the commercial development uh, uh, that's to the west of the site, and then the, uh, the height, typology, and the size of the residential development that's on the east side of the, of the, of the site. That's what we're looking at as a, as a, as a building. The next question to us was the, uh, the question of views from the, uh, from the lighthouse tower, and the, uh, that is one of the reasons that question was asked, that we tilted the tower towards the um, towards east in order to uh, maintain or stretch, extend, if you wish, the views uh, further. And then the, uh, the other one was trying to get not only the daylight triangle, but trying to get and create a public plaza as we, uh, as we think of it at the corner of uh, Lakeshore and East, and then uh, get the sun access to that. So that's purely where the geometry of the building, uh, of the building comes from. And the, uh, again, going back to the scale of Hasty Market, we've tried to recreate some of the, um, some of the way that the, the, the attractiveness, I think, to, the, uh, to people of Oakville comes from which is the size and scale of development uh, at grade. So I think that's where the comment that was made earlier where I was quoted to say that nobody looks up, uh, the, uh, except for people of Oakville. Uh, the, the, it's a very interesting study. It's been done uh, time after time throughout, th throughout, the, uh, throughout the world, and we really do live in the first two stories of the buildings. The remainder is, uh, is peripheral to our life, to our vision, and if we can design uh, in a way that uh, makes public spaces um, prone for, um, for people to, to, to spend time to linger, to use, then that's actually successful, uh, success, successful city building. So that's really where I was coming from. And this picture, Councillor Mira, shows, the, uh, shows that urban plaza. So you're seeing the sidewalk on the left-hand side. And the, uh, this is, uh, that will be east, and then entrances and commercial space uh, in the background receding uh, behind, the, uh, behind people sitting on the patio. The, uh, this is the elevation uh, showing the uh, lakeshore, and the, you can see a large amount of glazing, which is, again, inten intended for commercial development on lakeshore that then um, sort of recedes and becomes an urban plaza on, at the corner. You see a lot of people being happy and um, lingering out there. Um, just to talk a bit about the tower, uh, Looking at, at, at Oakville and the uh, predominant typology of a single family housing, um, which I'm suspecting many people are here do uh, love and enjoy about, about the place. It's sort of a very typical suburban typology uh, in the city. When, uh, when our clients first approached us um, about the project, the, uh, and we've done demographic and psychographic studies of potential buyers and residents in the building, uh, it was identified that a large number of people might actually be people that live in Oakville today, and we're looking either to downsize or, or to change their, change their life and make it more sustainable or, more, or tighter or more compact and so on. And one of the things that we've uh, sort of discovered about, the, uh, about communities that they don't happen in buildings or in houses, they do happen outside and between them. And that was sort of the, uh, the guiding, if you wish, concept that we've employed for the building, embracing the idea of spaces in between units and then applying that to the building itself, therefore not only creating the, um, uh, the courtyard, uh, the public plaza at the corner, but stretching that vegetation and sort of places in which people might select, elect to, um, to, to sort of talk to each other on balconies and so on up the building. And that's what you're seeing. That's what's guiding the building, um, the building's design. So that's, um, that sort of gives you a story of where the, uh, where the thinking behind the design comes, uh, whether it's striking or not, uh, that's not where we start or where we end. It is the idea or, uh, or a concept of trying to create something that, uh, actually, that actually has a meaning. I think I'm going to leave it at that. The, um, and the uh, open this to questions, I, I'm under 10 minutes, so I hope that was good. Thank you very much for your information, and you, you have a handful of questioners here. Uh, Councillor Liz Chenna? You had mentioned that uh, the sort of standard building would have a podium and then the high rise. So my understanding of podium is, is the reason for it is to mitigate wind tunnels. Um, given that there's a, a number of tall buildings around that, um, is that an issue here? Well, we've done a wind study. I'm really glad you asked that question. We've done a wind study to discover that the, uh, that's not an issue. 
with the current design. So we've done a wind study with the uh, with this design. The uh, so that that actually evaluated the the environment around the building, having to do with other buildings. Uh, I come from Winnipeg, has the, has the most um, the windiest intersection in the world apparently, and it's due to the to the buildings, not due to due to winds. That's right, yeah, that's been evaluated. And we've designed the plaza in a way that the winds that come and hit the tower will not wash the plaza because of the canopy and so on, so, yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Adams, are you next? I just had a quick question. You've, if you can flip back to your other picture, what are you cladding the building in? It's actually aluminum, um, the, um, and, it's, and it's sort of shimmery uh, but dull aluminum, so that's not gonna blind people, but it, it, it renders fairly white. Uh, when we first started the, uh, the project, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of metaphors that we use through the design process, and, and one of which was the, uh, the idea of, of sort of droplets on the, uh, on the surface of the lake, and that's some of the uh, configuration, as you can see, of the, of the sky gardens, if you wish, on, is, on the building. Comes and is there that. any um, window space within that yes. area? Or, yes. I mean, I, I see parts of it that clearly look like glass. That's right. But those parts that you have just described as being aluminum, are right. they broken up in some uh, They so actually do connect. So if you look at this image here, the windows will wrap between the boxes and uh, that's what you're seeing here as windows, as punched windows. Everything in the, um, in the balconies is 100% glazing. Okay, thanks. As far as I know, we still have no way to compel what cladding they'll use, or even if this is the design they'll build, so let's... I, uh, I recognize it's buyer beware with respect to what's being shown, including the trees and yes. the size of the trees. We've, we've and the been vines that block. they're showing on the building. We have been around this block. Councillor Elgar and then Councillor Knoll. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and coming tonight. I just wonder, have you um, ever read any books uh, by uh, a Professor Terry Fowler, York University, who in Urban Studies, and is, who has now retired from pre, uh, from being a professor, but he writes he has written many. I'm books afraid not. Where he says that no building should be higher than eight stories anywhere, uh, or you lose touch with reality on the ground. And nothing should be higher than the, than the tr than the tallest trees. It's a. It's I, a I, I'm very familiar with that theory. Actually, it permeates through Excellent. throughout the um, throughout the architectural practice. The um, uh, there's several reasons in the, uh, so that is mentioned, and there's a lot of debate. So that's one perspective when it comes to buildings as well. So we can we can elect to to like it or not, uh, and I'm going to leave it leave that at that. The uh, when faced, I'm going to cut off this line of discussion. I can't see the relevance to the matter before us. This okay. is not a uh, an item on which we make a decision, so that we don't run out of time, uh, Councillor Knoll. Thank you. Um, with respect to the uh, whole thought around buyer beware in terms of what you actually get versus what's proposed, what's the uh, um, what's the, the legal format of the commercial in, around the pedestal? Will it be rental, owned by a, a uh, the the owner or of the building, or will it be condominium? It will so be condominiumized. These are not planning. They're not planning questions. So here's the planning question. questions. Either. Here's the planning question. Those balconies are those communal or are those individual units? Individual. Okay, I just wasn't certain because they look pretty large. Thanks. Fair enough. Got a bunch of potential buyers here, maybe. Thank you very much for your information. Um, I do you. have one small question for you, if you oh. have a small answer for it. Um, Try. Why uh, did did you give any consideration to following our official plan when you set out to design this property? You're not going to like my answer, and the answer is absolutely yes. However, the uh, I I. Our firm and I've been involved with a number of master plans, number of plans that have actually dealt with the um, uh, with buildings in urban realm, and the uh, we typically, when working on on projects like that, we typically try to guard against bad architecture, and the uh, the uh, if you look at the. Uh, if you look at the good projects, they will come and bring amenities and quality with them that one cannot anticipate when artificially setting up a limits for, uh, for development. There's a number of buildings that I can certainly talk to you about, but I don't think we have time, that actually do that and prove my point in which the, um, if, if the building is done right, the, uh, its compliance to the regulations that are there to prevent from bad architecture uh, are not required. Thank you very much for your yeah. information. Thank you. Councillor Elgar, one more question.
correct? A, a question to, to you. 20 Mayor stories Burton. is the answer. Can, can you please explain to me why uh, everything we've talked about tonight is about the height, and yet when we have good planning things up before us about a number of stories, why it is not a planning issue at all? I'm curious. Thank you, sir, for your time. Uh, Councillor, I'm, I was perhaps overly mindful of the clock, but the discussion about what the professor has written about an eight-story limit finds no reflection in our own uh, official plan, and it's therefore not really a, a, an item on which I think we can judge it. The, the, um, and if I've erred, I beg your pardon. I'll accept that. It makes me think we've really got to get that in our new official plan then because it's absolutely about good planning and he, he is, was a planner. I know. Awesome. Let's have a five-year review. <laughs> and maybe we should have a committee to work on it. <laughs> it, it met today. It met today. All right. Uh, Councillor O'Meara. Your Worship, when you're ready, I'd be happy to move receipt of the uh, report. Councillor O'Meara, you're up. <laughs> I, I move receipt of, uh, of, sorry, I'm not even sure what agenda item it is now, but uh, uh, number four, item number four. Thank you very much. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Council, I need to ask you to do me a favor. With regard to item three, which we moved through so as not to inconvenience the public, it was uh, my hope to add to the recommendation that we receive that report the following motion. And I'd like the clerk to hand it out to you. And, um, and members of the public, you, you don't have to fear uh, offending us if you leave while we're cleaning up the rest of the meeting. I, I don't want to detain you more than you want to be here. Thanks. So, Council, um, uh, when we ask staff to work on the commercial, on the market sounding for the, the downtown cultural facilities, we excluded from consideration the Centennial Square property. Are we all clear on that? And members of the public have regret regrettably, there have been members of the public who have not noticed that exclusion and have come to believe that we are fixing to sell it. And since I know that none of us would ever desire to sell such a, uh, an important piece of, uh, of uh, property, uh, I thought it would be a really good idea to pass a, a motion, uh, and I'd even ask for a recorded vote, uh, reassuring the public that those lands uh, are an important public asset and that council directs staff that these lands should remain under public ownership and not be considered for sale under any option for the downtown cultural hub and that the report, et cetera, be received. Councillor Adams. I don't disagree at all. I just wanted to ask our staff with respect to the, I'll call it the air rights um, over the space, because there was discussion about different options around how to uh, reconfigure space. Um, if there was going to be something up, uh, up above, uh, would that protect um, options for doing that? Or could it, I suppose? The, the goal of the motion is to preclude that and to make it, to reassure the public that Centennial Square would be Centennial Square. Okay. So, uh, can I call the vote on that? Councillor Lapworth. Just want to confirm, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the area that we're talking about. This is from, from Lakeshore to Rebecca, and from Navy down to the waterfront, or just to the bottom of the hill there? I don't think Rebecca's involved. What's the street goes across the top? It's the square. Uh, Randall. Randall, pardon me. So, Randall to Lakeshore and, and Navy to Water. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Shall we do it? All those in favor, please rise to be named. Councillor Lischina, Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Lapworth, Councillor Elgar, Mayor Burton, Councillor Hutchins, Councillors Giddings, Councillor Duddock, Councillor Robinson, and Councillor O'Meara. I declare the motion carried, and I thank you very much for the uh, a little bit wonky uh, administration of the agenda tonight. Um, I now need to ask you for a motion to rise and report to council. Councillor Grant, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations 
on consent items 1, 2, and 3, confidential consent items C1 and C2, public hearing item 4, discussion items 5, 6, 7, and 8, and advisory committee minutes items 9 and 10 as noted by the clerk. A mover and seconder for the report would be in order. Councillor Chinna and Councillor Knoll. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The report is adopted. Councillor O'Meara, I understand you may have an item of emergency congratulatory or condolence for uh, a distinguished uh, citizen of our town. I do, and I'm, I'm sorry everybody's um, eager to get out of here, but on Wednesday, Marnie Fleming, the former um, CEO of Oakville Galleries, is being awarded with the Governor General's Awards in Visual and Media Arts for her over 24 years uh, at the Oakville Art Gallery. So she'll be in Ottawa receiving that award, and I would just like to uh, congratulate her on, on receiving that. It's a remarkable distinction. As we all would congratulate her, and thank you so much for being the one to bring that uh, announcement. And I, I commend to the media that uh, that news of glory, fame, and honor to the Oakville name. I wonder if there's any others. Seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for the bylaws? Councillor Duddock and Councillor Robinson, all in favor? Opposed, if any, the bylaws are adopted. Council, it's been terrific working with you. You've been a model of efficiency, and we got through a very long agenda, and I think we learned a lot, too. So with that, we are adjourned.